Hello, and welcome to the Salcast on Sunday the 20th of April, uh, 2014. Easter Sunday, in fact. I'm your host, Dan Train. Join me today, Zachary Burgess. <laughs> Say my name first, because Rob still hasn't actually managed to get some character. Oh, now he has. And Rob and Kemp. I have arrived. <laughs> he is on the couch. And so am I. I'm going on couch for this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's an on couch based podcast. <laughs> I just wanted to know, I was looking at the, the description of Silver on Wolf from Alpha. And there was a term there that I don't understand. New science types might be able to explain. <laughs> okay, good. Zachary specifically, the chemical engineer. What's a Troy ounce? It's a just a it's just a type of ounce. It's just like a different unit of right. mass. So yeah. what makes it more Troyish? I think it's, it's just a name. It doesn't mean it's from Troy, or maybe it does. <laughs> maybe it does. <laughs> but it's one of those because imperial units are weird, aren't they? It's like there's gallons, and then there's US gallons, and there's like they're mm. not actual gallons. It's probably the same with ounces, like yes. yeah. like and miles. There's nautical miles, or and there's like, statute miles, and there's like a million different kinds of miles. Or it's just like we decided to have. 17 troy ounces to, to a pound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because fuck it. It's, just, it's like those motherfucking bakers decided that a dozen wasn't good enough for them. So it's like, we'll make a fucking baker's dozen. What's a baker? How many is a baker's dozen? 13. 13. 13. Uh, why? Yeah. Because they like to give well, you I, more. I, I, all right, just to give you a bit more. This, this may be, your back. This may be bullshit, but I always thought it was because, like, if they were planning to make a dozen somethings yeah. to sell, they would make one more in case one of them fucked up. Fucked up. But then they, if they then give you the 13, the 13 then yeah. that screws well, no, it all up. But sure, I, I was, I was thinking it was more like that the, when they were doing it old, old school, you know, with actual dough and shit, not doing it old school. <laughs> mechanical, <laughs> mechanical baking or whatever. Okay. <laughs> when they were doing it the old fashioned way. Yeah, yeah. Presumably, because it was less precise, they'd make like slightly too much dough for 12 and then yeah. the 13th would be the little leftover one. Like right. a little extra bit of dough, but they cook it anyway. Okay. So a baker's <laughs> so dozen would then imply an actual dozen plus a little bit of crap on the end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 12. Right. It was like maybe it was the full extra. size one. Right. Well, that would make sense. Yeah. But I don't know. No. No. That sounds plausible. <laughs> yeah. So a baker's dozen is any value above 12. Because <laughs> you could have a lot more. Yeah, but presumably like... most bakers were fairly accurate of like how much 12 was. Depends how good a baker they are. Well, yeah. That'd be annoying. You couldn't couldn't line them up. Say, so yeah, you couldn't put, put them on the tray rows. properly. Yeah, I'll that's why it would like, be like well. a little bit extra. You could just wedge into the, the corner of the <laughs> well, tray. Well, presumably, if all thirteen came out well, then that's just one for me, or one for the dog. <laughs> then or... they started giving it to the customer. And probably just yeah, I guess there's only so many of them that the baker could eat. <laughs> I guess. Okay. More importantly, why are they giving tri ounces in a scientific context where you should use SI units, surely? Because they need to use every kind oh, of unit. It was in the section where it was like price per commodity. Oh, I know why. Yeah, it's to do with um, that's the weight they use in mining and when they're in for precious metals. Like, it's the same for right. like, golden, I think. Because then there's carrots, right? Which is to do with what? Density? Or purity? the purity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. carrots. But then. That ounces is the actual kind of mass they use in precious metals and jewelry and shit. So I don't think troy ounces would be used for like anything yeah, useful yeah, other no, than valuations in a like jeweler. steel. Yeah, I think they use it for hmm. yeah for precious metal crap and all that. Troy likes his metal. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Well, maybe it's something to do with gold <laughs> from, from the from civilization troy? of Troy, which yeah. probably isn't even a real. Thing. Maybe it was assigned some sort of value and it was pilfered. It's probably got nothing to do with the, no, the city. No, it's got nothing to do with I bet not. But it was lowercase Troy. But yeah. then again, I suppose most things that become units become, like, they don't have to be proper names anymore. Yeah, that's true. Well, I don't know. Newtons and things is capital name. I, that's just, well, that's, that's in symbology. Just, yeah. yeah, that's true. That's, that's coincidental, isn't it? Mm. It's just because little n means is a suffix for, like, nano. So you can oh, use yeah, that. Oh, yeah, true. If you wanted to do nano newtons, you'd start using. Mm. They should use those nano newtons. Yeah, I've never seen anything better than nano newtons. <laughs> nano newtons. <laughs> I push you with the force of a million man- nano newtons. <laughs> nano newtons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nano newtons. <laughs> nano newtons. <laughs> uh, they're more manlier than your average newtons. Is that just precisely the right amount of power to push the average man? Like enough force to make the average man. Move. Overcome <laughs> the coefficient of friction on the average standing bit of boot. ground. Or... 
On grass. On grass. <laughs> the bad idea. The bad idea. <laughs> okay. Or is it how much the average man is purportedly allowed to lift or capable of lifting? Like, mm. that would make more sense than the ridiculous Uber man. <laughs> The average man can lift well, a mano Newton, wherever a mano Newton is in real Newton. Probably someone called Newton. What, what makes you say that? Because <laughs> it's a man, man of Newton. Of Newton. <laughs> it's one of his kids. It's the ability to lift one of Newton's children. <laughs> right, someone to say it's a man of Newton. <laughs> Do you think secretly, well, not even secretly, but if you looked into the genealogy of, of, of all weightlifters and all, and all like, they're all directly <laughs> descended from Isaac Newton because they have... Oh, no, that's a special royalty class of weightlifters. It's like... <laughs> the Newton class. You could be a weight... Anyone could be a weightlifter, it's fine. But if you're a man of Newton... You get Newton. <laughs> if you're a man of Newton. <laughs> you get treated right. Right, okay. But when, when you... Uh... When you collapse, they uh, they put the, maybe it's the man of Newtons are the ones that get that screen put in front of them when something goes horribly wrong. <laughs> the rest of them know everyone can see you suffer. <laughs> if you're a man of Newton, no, you get the little privacy screen. Maybe if you're a ma- mano ma- mano Einstein or mano Stein, maybe you could <laughs> you could man- cheat and, and use some kind of speed or something to overcome mano Stein. Uh, the the Newtonian. You could beat the Newtonians with a better model of physics. <laughs> No. What, what if you're a relative of a man who's died? Is there something? Uh, a relative. <laughs> uh, you'd have the power of relativity on your side. <laughs> well, what if you're a general relative rather than a special relative? Yeah. Well, I guess. <laughs> Just yeah. a general relative. I'm not sure I'd want to be a special relative. No. Anyway. <laughs> but unfortunately, you are. So. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> oh. I was never diagnosed. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, welcome to the podcast. This is a podcast about video games, if you hadn't already guessed. <laughs> I'm not sure if you had, uh, listeners. Um, I don't think there was any part of anything that we said to allude to that. To bring, a, yeah, words. Bring you back to video games. <laughs> that was cool, that bit of dialogue in Mass Effect 2, where he talks about Newton being... Do you know that bit where they talk about the weaponry of the yeah. spaceships and they talk about kinetic projectiles and they don't bother talking oh, yeah. about explosives? They're like, you, Newton is hella tough or something. <laughs> I can't remember mm. what they actually say, but they're yes. like talking about the super high speed projectiles and mm. stuff and how all you need is the kinetic force to explode. Do you, have you seen any of those videos of that insane rail gun that the US Navy is testing? Where it like, no. so they're, they're trying to make a rail gun um, because it's just, it's really good for a ship, for um, a ship. Ultra long range. Well, it's not the range. You can get a good range from um, traditional. <clears throat> well, it's full of like artillery, what they call the big gun. Oh, the ship, okay, right. Traditional big gun. Mm. Uh, but the problem is, is if you fill your ship with gunpowder, effectively propellant, that makes it vulnerable for a start. And also mm. it's very expensive. So if you can just put, if you can just, propel the projectile purely with electricity mm. you don't need all that space for um, less to explode yeah you can make the projectile heavier in theory yes but you can deliver more uh, destructive power by just having a kinetic projectile and firing it with with electricity <laughs> well yeah but that's that's a matter of like how much electricity can you output at one time i guess that's, exactly. that's the problem but they the also need, they need to de- develop the um the right. actual so talk, 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 me, talk me through how it's supposed to work is it supposed to be like a magnetic yeah material that they just and it's just a coil or whatever and, right. then, and then they just accelerate it insanely fast with with just you know charge electric mm. charge whatever mm. Oh, it's a staged thing, so it goes along a rail yeah, and sure. it picks up speed yeah. along, so it accelerates across the thing. So it's a bit like the the the, the booster on the roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like that. I mean, they're, they're electric, aren't they? Some of them. Are yeah. They? Uh, well, no, they're, they're not, like air powered. Not all. Like, yeah. yeah. Some yeah. some of the faster ones are pneumatic. Yeah. Um, and they use it more for the brakes on a roller coaster. Right. That effect. Okay. But I suppose the bullet train is all done like this, isn't it? Oh yeah, that would be similar. Like, well, the um, you mean the maglev one? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's not the bullet train, is it? No, N- no but bullet trains are more normal, yeah. I think. Uh, Sorry, I always get confused with Japanese trains. Though a maglev is yeah. actually magnetically accelerated, or are they just? I think so. It's not just the levitation; it's also. There's the... not like a, a a jet engine on the back. No, but you could do that. 
But no, you just have one. one wheel, just one one <laughs> point of contact. Yeah, but you you haven't got so much. You have to transfer the power onto the onto the road, wouldn't you? I think I think they they are like magnetic uh, propulsion as well as levitation. I'm pretty sure because you've actively got the you're already lifting the thing. Does that really like, mean that they only really they don't need much power across the entire length of the train because it's. Well, as I think, opposed to a single point of having a lot of power. Yeah. Well, I think they do spread it across along so mm. that you can... Because you, you want to maximise the power uh, across the whole cross-section, right? Yeah. Uh, and there must down. be a point where if you had too much power in one point, there's an efficiency loss. I, I guess, expect so. Or, I would have thought so. Well, the problem with yeah. the maglevs always, always used to be just like you'd have... Because you had to switch the magnetic field so fast or so precisely yeah. to actually make it go in a direction. Yeah, mm. but that's the technology, right? It's improved over the years. I guess. They're getting better now. Apart from no one's still actually building any maglifts. Well, no one still cares, really. Because they're thinking of... They're, well, the Japanese the, are trying to sell the tech. Yeah, I suppose especially weren't the Americans yeah. very tempted on buying this. Or yeah. did that even happen? Did that deal go through? I can't remember. Well, uh, well the latest I heard was that the Japanese were going to uh, give the technology for free to, to, so that they could build one between like DC and Baltimore, and then uh, they yeah, would, and good. then they would supply the trains, which would cost money or whatever. Mm. Uh, but uh, that's the latest I heard. But it was Elon Musk who was going to build a pneumatic train in California. Do you remember that? That wasn't maglev at all. That it's was not actually a train either. Yeah, whatever you call it. What do you call it? It's like it's similar to a train because it's long and thin and carries people. But it doesn't carry like a train's load of people. It carries. It's like more like a really fast cab. Oh There's really? Like eight okay. people or whatever. Oh, was it? Okay. Okay. Oh, huh. I didn't. I didn't realize that. I think, or at least in the design that I heard about, there's probably different ways you can do it. Because there's the trouble with the pneumatic tubes is you can't. I think it's easier to make it with short, like you met, you met tubes. people, because then you don't have to bend them inside uh, the tube. That's true. Oh wait, yeah. so it was, it was literally going to be a big scale version of the way we used to deliver messages around buildings. Right? Effectively, yeah. Awesome. Talking about that because they've been talking about that for years. Like that would be a real large scale version of the shit in the tube joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, we should. You need an elephant. But yes, my life. Speaking of Elon Musk, did you see the? Uh, <laughs> that is his name, right? Yeah. Uh, did you see the dragon launch? Uh, uh, well, I watched the dragon launch yesterday, which was not too exciting in and of itself because they've done it three or four times before. But what was exciting was this time it had landing legs on the on the first stage. But they didn't have video of it trying to land, but apparently right. it worked. So okay. Hmm. Which is really exciting because they said they had like a thirty forty percent chance. So the idea is that, well, the the rocket is a multi million dollar thing and it all gets wasted or whatever. Right. And the fuel only costs two hundred thousand hmm. um, dollars. So the idea is if they can recover the stages, then That's it'll get a lot cheaper. Yeah. So what they've got they've got the idea is to launch the rocket up, but then when the first stage is spent. They, they, it will re-enter and then it will come down and land on its own. So it will reignite its engine and land upright huh. on little legs. Wow. That's the idea. And they're getting there. So That's, Why do they not just use parachutes? I mean, come on. They've already yeah. done that for ages <laughs> with parachuting state and like the, the shuttle extra boost, the external boost. Yeah, the, the boosters. Oh, yeah. could it? Could they attach like wings and have it fly down or something like a drone? <laughs> yeah, maybe a bit it's another way. Probably a bit heavy to do that one. Maybe, what? maybe. You might, you're adding, yeah, a little bit of metal. That's the thing. It's adding the weight that is the trouble because because what well, he was saying basically, no, no matter how good your, you know, these at least with the current level of technology, no matter how good your rocket is, you're still only going to get about three percent of your takeoff weight into orbit. Mm. So there isn't much weight that you can add yeah. like for a recovery system for like parachutes or whatever um so this is one way of doing it although presumably you need quite a bit of fuel just to land the damn thing although it's much much lighter than when it lifts off because it's mm. spent it's almost entirely made of fuel so once you've used, once you've used it all it'll uh, just be the, the whatever they make the shell out of exactly and the engines mm. um which are the expensive part that you yeah. don't want to lose uh but it had little legs and uh presumably this starts solving some of the Sky trash, like problem. Well, what, what, what yeah. you want to call it, like the uh, debris. I don't think like the lower rocket stages never actually stayed up there. Did no, they, really, they all burnt. That's, That's fair enough on reentry, but it's like old satellites and things that are staying up, isn't it? Up there, I think, because they the, the, the orbits decay eventually for for things in low Earth orbit. But obviously, there's a bunch of crap up there for some reason. Yeah, yeah, I guess. 
Like when, I know, when, like when's the point where this all becomes a problem? Because you know, there's been numerous times, I suppose, recently where there was even a you know, here we go. Here's a here's a video game link for you. <laughs> when the and when Microsoft and Xbox were trying to demonstrate the power of the cloud, and they had that demonstration of like here's the number of objects we can track, track and compute on a single Xbox. And it's not very many. And here's what happens if we get all that data crunched in the cloud and then send it through an Xbox. <laughs> Which is like, why wouldn't you do that in the first place? <laughs> kind of thought. Yeah, you would, but, yeah. Yeah. And it's, and, and it's like, oh, yeah, those red ones. Yeah, they're the ones we should worry about. <laughs> right. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of crap. I mean, I don't know if you saw Gravity, but it's kind of based on that idea. I know it's only a sci fi fiction thing. Yeah, damn, but, that, I mean, damn that film's good. It's cool. <laughs> it's not yeah. like, virtually nothing is like, like because, they, because everything decays in lower form of it, nowhere that there's actually going to be people that's going to be that. De- not nearly as dangerous as anywhere else that could, where there's no, no no decaying and there could be ships up there forever. Yeah, but the sphere gets so <laughs> larger, much larger. Yeah. But, but get- then on the other hand, because because when you go up further, you are only going up there for one specific orbit, like the geostationary orbit, yeah. which is exactly at one yeah. precise distance that and all above shell. the equator. <laughs> yeah, that one's probably, but it must be so expensive to get up there that there can't be that much crap up there. I suppose they have like. Once they reach end of life, I think they have like they have like a boost well, to, yeah, to like shut them out of the way. Sh- yeah to go into some parking orbit. Uh, usually, but who knows? There'd be all kinds of crap up there. In- I don't hear of it very well. It, it's never really explained. But presumably, we must have satellites that are going on completely different axes to just going around. Under. Yeah, there's the polar ones that go uh, that way because they're better for mapping, right? They go the other way. I guess. Yeah. Do we have like? There must be like. Are the ones that go all kinds of crazy angles up there, and they, they just have to be kind of careful. It's like, oh, but we move this one out of the way a bit. Not really. I mean, or do they all not just really any reason to? You either go polar or equatorial or geostationary, which is not which is not actually really an orbit at all. Hmm. Well, it is an orbit. Yeah, it's it? an orbit, but it's not like those other ones. It's, a tech- yeah. it's moving at a precise speed, and everything that's in geostationary orbit is moving at the same speed as everything else that's in geostationary orbit, because that's what geostationary means. That's what it's for, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. I saw the... I suppose you can, you can only achieve that on the equator, surely. No, you can... But, but then you're... Sure, yeah, that's what you mean by not an orbit, isn't it? Because if it's geostationary, say, above, I don't know, the UK, presumably it's... It, the way the Earth's rotating isn't exactly an orbit, is it? It's like it would be... Well, I, don't, I, don't know what the word, I don't know what the word is. It's like when you say you know, you're drawing circles around a ball or something and they get small at the top and then they go bigger. Presumably, if you're geostationary above UK, you've got one of those smaller rings, so it's not really an orbit. Do you, do you see what I'm trying to describe? Yeah. It helps yeah. with my hands doing it. The listeners probably have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. No, yeah, what you're talking about. I can't remember what the rule for, for geostationary is when it's not the equator. Yeah, you're right. Might, that orbit must be tilted relative to the equator, right? To be geostationary over. No, how does that work? <laughs> I don't even know. Because it would move, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, I don't think it works. I think you have to be on the equator and looking and look slanted because mm. it's so far away, geostationary orbit. That... Mm. So I don't know if you can have a geostationary satellite that actually is pointing at the North Pole. It might be hard to do. You yeah. see what I mean? Because it's. Because yeah. <laughs> well. it's. I, well, I guess if you're in a polar orbit, at least you'll always precisely go over the North Pole. That's true, but, <laughs> but the, that one goes round and round. It won't stay overhead, will it? Yeah. But, so that won't really work. But I guess. But that's what they use. That's why they have the polar orbit anyway, because it because actually you were orbiting so fast. It's not like you're you could just put like five satellites uh, yeah, and you're covering it away. continuously anyway. I guess yeah. potentially, yeah. Well, that's the. Uh... Was it enemy of the state theory? Is like, oh shit, we need to wait for a satellite to come overhead. Well, that was just dumb. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. I saw the International Space Station the other day with oh, my yeah. eye. <laughs> you can do that occasionally. Yeah, it's it was cool. well cool. Have you seen it before? Yeah, a long, 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 long time ago. <laughs> it was not that cool. long ago. Well, really. <laughs> well, not because you can't really see it around here, like because it's yeah, uh, like you know, it's too much light, and it's it's not it's not really that. I, it was quite bright. I know when when I saw it, it was mm. night. So, but it was mm. quite. I thought because I was in the middle of London, I wasn't expecting because of the light pollution. But I could see stars, and it was brighter than the stars. Mm. Um, and it was only overhead for like five yeah, minutes. It went, it went. It was really fast, obviously, because mm. it goes yeah. around the whole Earth in like ninety minutes or something. Yeah. So, but it was pretty cool because uh, I knew the precise time I was supposed to look for it. Maybe probably could hear. Yeah. yeah. I was- I guess, it, no, yeah, I, I admit, well, maybe it was something else that I saw. <laughs> yeah, I always assumed it was that, because it's like, what else is going to do that? But it wasn't that bright, or maybe it was just catching a bad angle, didn't I? Yeah, maybe. I, 
yeah, maybe it depends where the sun is relative to the space station of the Earth. Mm. I don't know. But it was in it was in need of whatever right. it's light, so I assumed oh that's why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess you see it more yeah, more likely to see it out in need of than in Prez. But yeah, that was pretty cool. Or in Ipswich. In the switch. In the switch, but not in the cult. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from the cult. <laughs> Stay away from the cult. <laughs> oh dear. So I tried to tie into video games. I was talking about Mass Effect earlier. So yeah, vaguely. well we just had a whole conversation that's basically cool. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What's we, going... We're allowed to talk about space now because of Kerbal Space Program. Wasn't there some kind of NASA Kerbal patch yeah, thing? Yeah, we'll get to that later because oh, that's okay, one okay. of the things that I've been playing, which is why I mentioned it. We technically talked about that last episode. Yeah, but not all of it. Not all, there's more. Well, yeah, obviously. There's always yeah. more. <laughs> What's going on with Bioware, anyway? What are they making? Um, I mean, well, the real Bioware, not the subsidiaries all over the place. There is scuttlebutt that, that they're working on another Mass Effect universe oh, yeah. game, but it's unclear as to what it's what it is. Right. I think that was the last I knew about it, anyway. Um, and they might be working on another. Well, one of the other Bioware's might be working on another Dragon's Age. I think. Oh yeah. Well, that makes sense. I suppose. Well, They're not, not, the, not that two though. went. Well, yeah. no, that's the thing. It, Dragon's Age One was well respected and liked, and Dragon's Age Two kind of shat all over it. Stop um, saying Dragon's Age. Is it Dragon Age? Is it? Oh, <laughs> oh I thought it was Dragon's Age. Sorry, Dragon Sage. <laughs> Dragon Sage. No, you're right. It is Dragon Age. Yeah, sorry. Well, easy. It could be Dragon's yeah. Age. There's nothing wrong be. with that grammatically. <laughs> I'm not saying anything that was wrong grammatically. It was just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Get it right, fools. All right. Uh, All right. Okay. Calm down. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Cool. Cool. Answer. Okay, so we, cool. get, so we get on to actual news, news. Not, not like speculation about <laughs> fire. Our, our news is fire always speculation because okay. we never actually pay attention to news. And we're got... like, I think I saw that. <laughs> what did you think you saw this week, Zach? I don't think I saw anything this week. <laughs> this week or last week? In last fact. week, the previous the week, two, the two last week, the last. two contiguous weeks that have preceded this coming week. <laughs> <laughs> Well, pretty much immediately after we did the last podcast, there was that Nintendo Direct about Smash Brothers that, I, you know, Zach seems strangely reluctant to talk about, but I think it's awesome. What's it's not that interesting. What's going on? Well, let's get the sucky news out of the way first, because that's exactly what they did, was that the release schedule is a bit weird. Yeah, that's definitely a bit bizarre. It was like the 3DS version is coming out summer, which is soon-ish. And the actual version version that everyone wants to play is coming out... Winter! Which is not so soon. Ish. Ish. Okay. So yeah. I expect that, like, next April or something? I could sort of... The more I thought about it, the more I can sort of understand perhaps why they've gone this route, because I guess the people that want to play Smash Brothers, are, like us, are sort of immediately going, we don't want the 3DS version. What are you talking about? This isn't mm. what we want to do. So by releasing it first, they kind the, the people that really can't wait... Will buy it? Will probably buy it. Because That's they get quite clever, yeah. Because there's, so, there's actually quite a lot and you'll get the, between the, the two games. The key part, so of course, is the Wii U Christmas bundle that everyone will be buying, including you. <laughs> I need to make a confession. <laughs> You've already bought one. I bought a Wii U. Ah, <laughs> where is it? It's not arrived yet. It's in the post. <laughs> yeah, Easter post. But surely, if they're releasing the the one that everyone cares about in, at Christmas, it's like, what are they going to do for their financials this year? Because <laughs> where's their big thing for this financial year? Well, when there's Mario Kart, that'll be a deal. I guess. That looks pretty cool. Well, like I keep saying. Well, that's the thing. I, I still... I, the bundle deals are not much... You know, pretty good... Not really very good no, deals. No, they're not. And also, I think the prices have spiked recently. Like, very recently. Within, the, like, the last week or so. Right. Okay. Like, when you bought them. When I've been looking, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure Amazon have spiked quite badly. Recently, <laughs> it's like the best deal I've seen out there for new Wii U's is is Amazon, but that's the one that comes with Lego City Undercover and Rayman Legends, where it's you basically get Rayman for free, and it's like cool. Um, Rayman's a good game, yeah. Recent ones, so that was that was one of the best ones I've seen. But like you know, if you wanted the Mario and Luigi pack, you'll see yeah, 250, 260 pounds, right? Yeah, and it's like that seems too much. That <laughs> still feels. Really? Yeah, it does. It feels too much. I think when the the like the, a bundle deal hits the two hundred pound mark, I think Nintendo are in a sweet spot for like people actually considering it a good value option. Mm. 
And like, uh, admittedly, the Xbox One and PS4 aren't exactly cheap machines. Well, the fucking Wii U is a cheap machine in terms right, of the actual of it, stuff in it. It sort like, of is. Extra it's extra touch screens. And... That's what I mean. That's what, yeah, that's the only bit where you can sort of understand the expenses because of the controller. But then, like, the screen on it isn't going to be, isn't anywhere near as good as a, I don't know, a, a Nexus, say, the screen on a Nexus. Sure. And it's because it's, you know, it's resistive touch screen and it's not a very high resolution touch screen at that. And it's just the 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 like the I guess the, the all their tech is in low latency. Yeah, but that's the super cool bit of technology in there is the low latency um, video transfer, um, which is undoubtedly neat. But no, even knowing all of that, I think it's like to everyone else who isn't so interested in that stuff. It feels like a hard sell. I don't know. Two hundred fifty sounds like it's cheap for a games console nowadays because it is. <laughs> But not for a console that is mostly last gen based. You know, people would put it, if you put that up against the 360 and PS3, and people describe it in terms of, well, it's about the same power as these consoles you that have been available for five or six years, except you can pick up a 360 for 150 quid. Yeah, so the it's same like pad 100 pounds. 100 pounds, yeah, 100 pounds I'd be surprised. Of, 100 pounds of saving for a much bigger games library that can do more than the Wii U can. In terms That's of not the, the point, though. The point is, it's a Nintendo hardware console that's got new Nintendo games on it, and that's why it's that's the, the reason new why Nintendo people, console. That's the reason people like me are interested in it. I don't know. I, I, and the it seems expensive. If you think about how much the Wii came out at, the Wii, I, I seem to remember, didn't. I think it released at around 180, yeah. which was that's a hell of a good price for when that thing came out. And it's, I don't know. That's why I think that's part of why it sold so well. I don't know. I, I think they. That still doesn't make the Wii U seem expensive. <laughs> Going from one eighty to two fifty. Again, I think to us, that's not so much of a problem. I think to average Joe family consumer, that maybe there's a problem there. Especially when you start factoring that Ninty Games are still retailing at forty pounds new and don't seem to dip unless you get involved in eBay. Rather than all the other console manufacturers where they're retailing at like forty five to fifty new, <laughs> but they dip fast. <laughs> that's that's true. the difference. That's the difference. They dip fast on other platforms. Whereas if you want a copy of Super Mario 3D World, pony up, bitches. <laughs> I think even the Wii version of New Super Mario Bros. still sells relatively highly. Probably does. Which is like, you know. Played some Super Mario 3D World the other day. Oh, uh, have you? Yeah. Uh. Multiplayer. <laughs> no. <laughs> It's pretty cool. I, I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it's, it's not good. something I've got, like, I'm sort of going to try and pace myself a little, like, in what I get for it. But it's... What are you starting out with? Uh, well, the one I've got comes with Lego City Undercover. Okay. Um, and I've also got a copy of New Super Mario Brothers coming. It's like, found one for okay. a reasonable price. And, uh, yeah, start with the. I don't know, I, I still quite like the idea of playing. I haven't played any of the New Super Mario Brothers games, so I'm still kind of into, like, seeing what they're like. You know, it'll be fresh to me. It might not be fresh to anyone that played any of the other six, or however many they've been. That's alright. I'll wait for that. And then oh, does your bundle it, have Nintendo Land? In? Probably not. No, oh, that's really good. Well, that's the thing. They sort of, <laughs> well, but then I'm not. I don't have a Wii Motion Plus. Oh, right. Yeah. Set of Wii Motes. That's true. So I will be missing out on most of what that offers. Yeah, so I don't enough. care too much. Yeah, that's fair enough. And you know, it's probably only going to ever be one of those things where it's like. Oh, this is what it can do. And I'm never going to touch it again. <laughs> it's quite, it is quite a good party game. Like, I played it the other day. The, <clears throat> the Metro part of it is like for the right. supposed hardcore, but it, mm. it, it it's really quite fun. It's quite a lot of stages of them. Um, it's like a shooter. So um, the guy with the with the game pad gets a, a proper the the um, gunship thing. Oh, right. like gunship yeah, yeah. thing. And the control on that is quite interesting. You kind you kind of um, you have like full axis control and you aim by like tilting the thing, which huh. is a little bit weird, but you have like up, down, strafe, left, strafe, right. And you have up and down v- vertically. Mm. So it's quite a lot of controls going, there's quite a lot of stuff going on. Mm. It's actually quite hard to fly at first, but you get used to it. Um, but that was cool. And it had a whole like mecha Ridley final boss thing mm. of a jig, which is crazy awesome. And uh, yeah, yeah. Quite good. I quite like that. A bit of me is like, you know, whoever would treat that in the same 
same way as we sports you know it's like, yeah would i be interested in it for a little while and then i don't really have the circumstances where i'd probably be able to play party games yeah like it's definitely very a party often game. anymore so it's, it's the same reason why i'm a little bit it's like as cool as all these new like four player single screen games that have been coming up kind of are a bit like tower fall and samurai gun and samurai stuff like gun, that yeah not sure we have the circumstance that frequently it's like mm. that's true that's true well, okay, a lot of those are like you only really play them one time anyway maybe yeah like yeah. there's not much to samurai gun no <laughs> you just play it one time and that's you've seen the whole thing and then you sort of watch it and then you think hmm smash bros yeah it's like smash bros is, is, is like that kind of <laughs> therefore let's play smash bros yeah, so Smash Brothers. You've only got two players. You play a bit of Nidhogg and there you go. Anyway, yeah. Smash Brothers. So Smash Brothers. Yeah, so uh, we we're talking about release schedule and stuff. It's like the reason why I think that works is, uh, again, there's a lot of shared between the two games. So they basically said all the characters will be in both games, like the ones you actually play as, and the move sets are going to be the same across both games. Um, so that's it. The, only, the, thing, the major thing that will differ is what modes are available and what stages are available. Um, and they will be different on both versions um and then they got talking about characters for ages which is cool like, do they, they have the roster about... yet no still not well we still don't think it's probably not the full roster still they they mentioned that yoshi is back and um Mikario is back and um charizard is back as a single character really because um, this is the big thing um well the, the sort of Pokemon. big thing yeah well they're no longer doing characters that have multiple forms right um, they're ditching that idea entirely. So Zelda is back, but Sheik is also back so as two separate characters. Okay. Um, which there... I think is kind of cool because I never played as Sheik or <laughs> played as Zelda. And yeah, but like, it kind of sucks. But because... then you're wasting a move to do the transfer, the transformation for me. And it's yeah, like... but it kind of sucks because it's just like now when they say that they're cutting down the roster, it's like they've basically created at least like four more characters by getting rid of the transformations and then they're going to have four less characters from this cut down roster <laughs> I suppose you're right <laughs> Sonic's back woo I didn't know that they probably must have announced that sooner because they didn't make a big deal of it but no. it's uh... who do you want to see anyway Stang? <laughs> no one well who would you what cull I, what, I want, interesting. what I want to see is like why not just have some of the characters that were really obvious, but that were that were probably going to end up as clones if you'd done them before? It's like, well, it's like, put, I like bet, with I Star Fox, both... you just get rid of all the other characters apart from Fox, and then maybe bring in like you could just have Crystal be a different Star Fox character because it'd be a different fighting style or something. Maybe not yeah. just another Fox clone. Well, yeah, I reckon like Fal- Wolf and Falco. Oh yeah, I reckon Falco, Falco and Wolf won't make the cut. Um, Falco, no Falco pun. Falcon. No, that's, no, that's, Falcon. Falcon. that's Captain Falcon. Oh, Captain Falcon. Oh, is it? Yeah, because he Captain... might not be him because he's kind of obscure at this point. Well, I don't know. Yeah, maybe they haven't done an F Zero <laughs> game for a while. But yeah, Captain Falcon and Ganondorf. One of... Ganondorf would go. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, because they're... because there's already too many Zelda. Yeah, they made Mario and Luigi different enough. They have to have Falcon now. Or Captain Falcon. Surely, yeah, just Ca- the... Captain Falcon should stay. Just because Falcon Punch. Because Falcon Punch. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, G- Ganondorf, I would not care about leaving. Ganondorf, you can have the fat foot. <laughs> you can have the fat foot, yeah. <laughs> but that's just basically, it's almost suicide yeah. when you end up in a fat foot. Totally you sat there for so long. Have we got multiple links this time, are they? There yeah. are still both Link and Toon Link. Right. Which I think is dumb, because Toon Link could have just easily gone. Because that's not even a different character, is it? It's no, like, that's the, the, the moveset, same moveset. The moveset was the same, but with slightly different... You know, I think it had less <laughs> punch. They should have turned that into a transformation and then had Gandalf and have a transformation between Nor Gandalf and Windway and Gandalf. Oh, I thought you were going to say, like, have a transformation between Gandalf and Captain Falcon somehow. <laughs> In fact, all the Zelda characters should just transform into Windmaker mode and have a transformation. Yeah. Or Zelda should go into. Yeah. Yeah, turn into whatever she's called, Tetra. Tetra. Yeah, that'd be cool. So the, the, the sort of one. It's in Tetra. Tetra, yeah, Tetra, that's right. Tetra's the city in in the Middle East, right? With the things carved into the rock that's in Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. And Tetra is the captain of the pirate captain from Wind Waker. So it is spoiler that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is a name from the start, so that's not a spoiler. Yeah. Mm. Well, you just spoiled it. But it's Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, it's Zelda. You played a Zelda game. Sheesh. I don't think it was that obvious. Okay, fair. No, enough. it was kind of. 
it was kind of dumb when it happens. And she's just like, well, I guess I'm Zelda now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't really know this was going to happen, and now I'm just going with it. Rough. Sure. <laughs> I suppose it's different from most other Zelda games, isn't it, at least? Mixing it up a bit. The Sheik stuff was cool in, in Ocarina. That worked. Nice I think thing. that's why, yeah, Sheik is sort of like, yeah. or respected more as a character, I guess. That's actual difference. Fighting style between Zelda and Sheik. That's oh, yeah, wildly, wildly different. Yeah, not between Link and Toon Link. I mean, I still think that makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm okay with most of the splits. Um, I mean, you didn't really play. Well, I suppose you might have played as Squirtle a little bit when Pokemon Trainer was about. Bulbasaur was the annoying one. The Ivysaur. Oh, Ivysaur. Yeah, <laughs> Ivysaur was kind of the annoying one. Of the yeah, his move suck. <laughs> but I didn't really like playing a Squirtle either. I always ended up finding myself as Charizard because Charizard was cool. Yeah. Um, but then you had to switch because that was the mechanics. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't, I don't care about them leaving either. That's but Charizard fine. was like quite fat and slow, and I don't like slow characters as much. No, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying I like them as much, but I'm okay with the idea of the, the other two not being <laughs> Well, apart from instead, what they've done is just bring in more Pokemon. Why the fuck not? Well, just make yeah. a goddamn Pokemon fighting game at this point. <laughs> well, this is, yeah, this is the weird, because the, 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 the announcement that no one was expecting was that Greninja is, is being added. Which is, which is basically the It's quite again, a lot like really. Lucario, yeah. Which is like that's a kind of a weird choice. Like, uh, hopefully the move set will be different enough that it's they're just doing a very like <laughs> it's like there's it's like a Pokemon evolution apart from not. They've it's been like you had Mewtwo and then you got Lucario, which is basically like Mewtwo apart from slightly different, and now you've got Greninja, which is basically like Lucario except for slightly different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you never could play as. I oh, know you could play as Mewtwo, couldn't you? Yeah, and the... Uh, he was like the character. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, he sort of wasn't because he was. He had the same super... like charge ball, and <laughs> I guess, but he was super floaty. Yeah, and, like, that was, was what was different. He was quite a different character, like to to actually play as. Which meant they probably could have lived side by side quite happily well, yeah, in the exactly. last few iterations. But apparently, they have too many Pokemon, so they. <laughs> Is Jigglypuff even going to make it back in? Yeah, we don't know. Jigglypuff might die. I, I, I would be upset with Jigglypuff leaving. Just because it's such a... Not because, I, again, I like playing as, but just because she's such a stupid character. And it's like nice to have the dumb one every now and then. Who so, doesn't, yeah. who doesn't like Rick? Jigglypuff's so been in it since the beginning. Yeah. Right? yeah. So it's already like they've already announced four Pokemon, and then with Jigglypuff that'd be five. <laughs> <laughs> there's quite a few but then Pokemon is like one of their biggest friends yeah that's why they should just make it a Pokemon fight it's like just a wave it... of Pokemon nostalgia I've noticed recently worse than ever like it's like now everyone that played Pokemon Red and Blue when they were a kid are all like just the right age to be like hmm. to be like all nostalgic about no, it I do remember weird. this well it's not that yeah. surprising it's like there was Twitch plays Pokemon so that didn't well exactly it has that and the new Pokemon that was actually good yeah. and, like, different in some actually yeah. interesting ways. It's kind of a... They kind of solved their own like... fatigue problem with the last one, didn't they? Really? Yeah, that's not even the last more than one game, though, I don't think. <laughs> the, the, the non-fatigue. Like, they, they just making more 3D Pokemon games isn't enough. No, they'll probably have to mix it up more. But, they, like but they... they won't. Well, they made your, like your favourite game, games. didn't they? The Mystery Dungeon shit. Yeah, but that wasn't really them. No. That was like another company that they reskinned the game as Pokemon. Yeah, but they got a licence for it and everything. That's cool. You should just make Pokemon Smash Bros. Basically. Yeah, You have maybe. a roster of every goddamn Pokemon. That would be insane. It wouldn't be that insane. There's too many, how many? <laughs> like 700. <laughs> 700. They already have characters. all the models. <laughs> To some extent. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> and they already have move sets, so you don't need to worry about that. Right. So you just have the same move, like, so. Well, yeah, because then you could actually have, like. Yeah, but you'd have to animate every single one of them to do those moves. Yeah. Well, not really. Like, tackle because a lot... for every single character. Yeah, but, like, that's. All of the, the way the Pokemon animations would work is just. It would be generic, like. It'd be like yeah, how it is in the game. In a fighting game, game that's, that doesn't work. It's like tackle is just, like. You move towards the enemy. Oh, <laughs> no, there'd be more to it sad. than that. Yeah. It wouldn't, though. It would, be, it would be awful if it was like how you're describing. You need the frames for people to be able to know what's happening if you're doing this a fighting game. This is a Pokemon game. fighting game we're talking about. It's not like you're not going to care anything about frames. It's going to be a Pokemon fighting game where just Pokemon fight each other in a Smash <laughs> Brothers style. It's not a serious fighting game. It's even less serious than the Smash Brothers from I mean, a Pokemon game. No. I don't agree. I think that would be awful. <laughs> 
That would be like any of the Sonic fighting games <laughs> that have ever existed. Because it's like it, all the moves are just like projectiles always. In, in the majority of Pokemon moves, the actual list of physical moves that you'd have to do probably wouldn't be that long. Which then makes it an interesting challenge in a way. Like, how would you... It'd be like a shoot 'em up Yeah. <laughs> or whatever you call it. Well, it would be like tower. They wouldn't be projectile projectiles. They'd be like hit an area vaguely in front of you, <laughs> like an explosion. Just creates a proof in front of you of like leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You yeah. need the characters to like to be. I don't know. I was about to say enthused, but it's not the right way. How the fuck like, would you like move Onyx around a like a fighting arena or whatever? Just or like a, crass he, or something. Just, well, <laughs> some of the water ones maybe would be a bit weird. They'd all just float though, because you know that's how it works in Pokemon. The way that Evie are using a fucking water Pokemon to fight. So like, oh look, they're just mysteriously floating in air. Above the water in most cases when you're fighting on the water. Right. <laughs> Except for Goldeen. No, that... Gold, Goldeen would flap. Uh, yeah, but you'd make a, make a flap around, wouldn't you? Goldine, well, did they all Goldine. flap? <laughs> the fish. <laughs> I think the, the only one of those that's actually weird is Magikarp, because it, it lays on the ground and flaps like... That's not even... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's some Japanese legend or something, well, yeah, isn't it? Obviously. Which they mostly are. But it's like it's laying on top of the water... <laughs> <laughs> when you're fighting in a water battle. <laughs> Nine tails and all that. So, so there's a shit ton more Pokemon even outside of the main characters. Like, you know, they've, ad- they've added the concept of the Master Ball as well as the regular all right. Pokeball. And out of the Master Balls you only get the, like, the rare Pokemon come out. Yeah. All the powerful ones. Um, so when you see one of those, it's like you throw it, you know you're not going to get something shit. Or maybe, unless one of the master Pokemon are like super... Just unless they just, unless they just put Goldeen in there just to be the one off one. Oh, that would be really funny. <laughs> oh no, it's a Goldeen in last one. Or a Magikarp or something. Just yeah. do the exact, like, the worst possible Pokemon. Oh, unless it's like, it's Magikarp and it's like, it's like flapping around. But if you touch it, it's insta-kill. That would be really funny. Well, it's, no, like, it's a level 100 Well, it was, always, it was always the thing that... W- l- l- people suspected about Goldeen, and I don't know if it was ever proved or not, or I'd, I'd never heard of anyone, but they, no, no. it was always sus- suspected that it's like, what, if the Goldeen jiggles its way into water, then it evolves, apart from... Yeah, I think that I don't think, yeah. I don't think that, I don't think that. But that would make sense. Sort of, yeah. So that's what they should do with Magic Up. It falls into a water and it evolves into Gyarados and everything blows up. Yeah. <laughs> the Smash Brothers still have those laser swords and all that. Oh yeah, they're still there. The lightsabers. Except they can't call them lightsabers. They just call them light swords. They're not going to change any of the items, really, I imagine. They'll probably strip some out. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think there's a few. I don't think, they, don't think they're probably back, going though. to add many, are they? Uh, there was a couple of new ones. I can't remember what they are oh, off the top of my Apart head. Apart from but... the last but that's just a different skin of the paper. Yeah. No, there, were, there were a couple of new ones. Um, Bumper's back, though, so I'm happy. I like the Bumper. It's fun. Um, there was a... Uh, earlier, the, the, the trip mines are still about. Mm-hmm. Um, and the smart bombs are still about from Fox. Like it was, all that um, Yeah, I can't remember. I didn't, I didn't see any party bombs. They might have gone. Where did those go? Not, those aren't even actually an item. That's just a way to get other items. Yeah. I didn't see. Oh yeah, I didn't see. Any, I didn't even see any like capsules or things like that. Meta items, I suppose. Burp, 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 burp. Yeah, all the barrels and capsules and shit. Those are, those don't even you don't even need to consider whether you keep them in or out because they're not really a thing. It's just like mm. another layer of item. It's like first of all, you have to break this item to get to the act item. Mm. <laughs> whether you break it by freeing it at someone, that's a slightly different choice. So the other thing they talked about was the stages, and I can't really remember many of the stage specific info. But apart from the one where it's like every stage will have a version of it. That is, is is like Final Destination, which is just the the flat plane level. Oh yeah, it's like so there will be a themed version of every stage that plays like Final Destination. That's not actually cool so though. I mean, the only reason they did that is because like they the way they've split up online play is into two categories, which they call for fun mode and for glory mode. And every battle in for glory mode plays yeah, on the Final ranked. Destination stage. <laughs> Uh, and that's where the ranking and stuff happens. But it's not like Final Destination is the only stage that they play in Tournament Smash Brothers. No, it but just has to be symmetrical. And like, surely Battlefield or whatever it's called. Yeah, is Battlefield is one of the classics. Is is yeah? I think they should. If they were going to do every stage in a star, they should have done every stage as Battlefield. Because that's slightly more interesting. That would, that, yeah, that would have been cooler. 
from our perspective anyway. I also hope it just doesn't fuck up when you press when you go into random mode like we normally do, and it just like there's a fifty percent chance of it picking. Well, I'm sure it'll be a toggle or something. Yeah, maybe to switch it into final destination mode, and then it will random select the skin basically. Hmm. I also, there's not there's still been no word on whether they're bringing back the stage editor. So no more. <laughs> let's see if we've got any of the random shit stages we can make, or any of the ones that Zach makes where there's no bloody. Well, the no, the edge grabbing is gone. I think they said at one point. Did they? Yeah, the ability to hang from ledges is gone. Like, you have to recover properly now. Well, that depends whether they actually meant edge hanging as in staying there. Yeah. Or whether <laughs> that's you're that's the actual up. thing that's... Oh, yeah, no, you're prob- yeah, you're probably right. It's probably like you, you, might, you might grab it and pull yourself up, but... but... You can't just hang there forever. Yeah. yeah you can't edge hog people. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I can't remember the spec. I, I remember hearing something Although technically edge hogging was one of the, like, important tactics in it was. proper Smash Brothers play. <laughs> yeah. But it's probably worth getting rid of. It'd be a shame if they didn't have the stage editor when you've got a nice touch screen to work with. Yeah. That might be the best place for it. But who knows? It might be not technically possible. Well, what they before. want to do. Yeah. yeah, that might not be what they want to spend their no. resources on. Maybe not. Who knows? So that's Smash Brothers stuff. It got me all excited. Anything else on Nintendo Direct? Uh, well, no, the, the Direct was entirely about Smash oh, Brothers. Right. But Nintendo News in general, we've got those they've awesome put, looking trailers for, they, for yeah, the Mario Kart. They've put out more trailers Rainbow for Mario Road and Yeah, the retro track stuff all came out as well, like what's, what some of the ones they're yeah. remaking. I, 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 the one that sort of like I almost liked the most was the remake of the of a SNES track, but done in full 3D. Yeah. So like with all the that was cool. like ripples and stuff, it looked, you know, they actually given it terrain. Yeah. So exactly. that actually looked pretty cool. That's... Yeah, I think it's exciting stuff. I, I mean, it is kind of ripping off the racing transformed in some places oh, it, with its crazy carts. Pretty much, but they did that from. I don't, actually, I don't know which came first. Did Mario right. Kart Seven, whatever it's called, the one on the 3DS, come, come first? before Transformed? Couldn't say. Mm. But it has got like the sticky, like it's turning into F Zero in places. Oh yeah, yeah, the anti grab wheels. That's its big thing this time. Right. Is the anti grab wheels? That's, yeah. that's their addition. Yeah. Not actually not, a big thing. No, because it will probably still play the same way. It's just the tracks will bend. Yeah, it's like down. Hmm. It's like one of the tracks they saw on the retro one was Cooper Beach. Um, That's right. From the N64 days. But that track must behave really differently in certain areas because the carts can go underwater now. So it's like, surely there's there's one section of the track in particular that I have in my head where it's like, no, oh, actually, so you could probably just cut that entire corner if you wanted to, but then how well do the carts, do they slow down? Yeah, but wasn't the, whole, isn't the whole point of that system that it is like racing transformed where it only happens at a point in the track? No, no, where it's you, like you, you, will, you can drive into the water at any point and you will automatically turn into the thing. I, I've seen that happen. But the transforming, that that the track, transforming though, thing takes ages, though, even in the Mario Kart. It's like, it, it's know, not an instant transition. You don't just keep going at exactly <laughs> the same speed. Well, I don't, yeah, that's about I don't know. I don't know. That much. I mm. can't remember that much detail. We shall see. Uh, yeah, so it's interesting. Interesting nonetheless. But they did fuck up. They've already fucked up in my head with Mario Kart in one crucial aspect, and that's four player local multiplayer. And because they, they the GameCube is the only version in, what, that I can remember that has ever got this totally right, which is four player split screen multiplayer running at 60 frames per second because they've already said it's not going to happen right. on this one and okay. it didn't happen on the Wii either no um, so as soon as you go above two players the detail yeah. level drops and the frame rate drops yeah makes sense and it's like well it's what normally, normally, normally one or the <laughs> well, normally one or the other would be fine surely drop the detail so you can keep 60 yeah or drop the frame rate so you can I don't know <laughs> doing both seems a bit well it's a real yeah, I mean, you. well, you are doubling the, almost, well, you've got less pixels, but you're, mm. you are oh, you're doing a lot. you're doubling the yeah. yeah, every time. Well, 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 the amount of rendering you're doing is, yeah. like, so much more expensive. But still, for a Mario Kart game, that is a little annoying. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame. Uh, but it'll be playable. Yeah, oh, yeah, no doubt, but it would be, I guess, to the person that owned it, and has seen it at its best, yeah. it would be... Yeah, it's a little disappointing, I guess. Mm. So yeah, Mario Kart on the way. Mario Kart, woo! 
Oh, sorry, I was reminded myself today. It's like, oh, yeah, Sonic Boom's coming out on the Wii U. Oh, Excellent. Oh, yeah, of course. That, Matt, the, the one where the Sonic's... Sonic's it's, different. He's wearing a snood, and it's Western <laughs> developed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, who knows what that could be like. Could be awesome. Oh, I really hope it is. Could be really lame. <laughs> it could also be ultra, ultra terrible. So we shall find out. You're just, you're just getting a whole load of games that you don't... That you, as we just previously mentioned, you don't have four players for. <laughs> What's well, like Boom Mill won't need four players. We no. don't know that. I'm fairly sure it might have some kind of co op It may have a multiplayer mode, but I bet it's all geared up. You know, some of the videos had the characters on their own, so. Yeah. I, I don't think that will be its core focus. I mean, there may be a kind of resurgence in local multiplayer in the indie scene, and I guess we've got Smash Brothers and stuff, but I, don't, I think in general it's still in decline, local multiplayer. I've been, uh, yeah, I've, I've been seeing more and more people sort of writing articles and sort of commenting yeah on... it's because there's been this indie wave with yeah. like yeah it's like, it's like it, actually, remember this it was awesome guys yeah. why is nobody doing this anymore yeah. but I don't think it'll save it <laughs> no you might be right who knows it's I think it would have uh, maybe the problem is is that you know this would have been if we were still kids maybe yeah and you know living in proximity to each other this stuff still works mm. um but because we've got older and life gets in the way and you can't just come over everyone's oh, house life. all the time. Excuse me, says life. Yeah. <laughs> it's not no, like for the people that have grown it's up. It's not like all the kids play. now don't have internet as well. That's the thing, they do. They're, they're, they're the ones on Xbox Live you can hear, god damn it. You know, <laughs> exactly. Talk about your mum. <laughs> my, my thinking is, is that, you know, they've gone from, like, gaming grew up. Like, everyone grew up with that because that was the only way you could do it. And then the internet happened and the people developing were making games for themselves still. So they made games for the internet because that was where they grew up too and it's like now we're getting to the stage where it's like people are making all these games again but because perhaps you've been so long without games of that type that the kids of now are growing up without that mm, it's true to a certain extent you know it's not what it's, was the point of this sentence no, I'm, just saying, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to work out where you were going with this point get, get path. My, my point is is that kids of today haven't had the local multiplayer experience I think that's probably true that we used to have because we used to have them all the time they across used... pretty much every game would have something that you could do in four player whereas kids today you have to go home to your own house to play Minecraft with your friends you can't, you can't, <laughs> yeah. you can't well, unless you have the Xbox laptops. version the Xbox yeah, version laptop, did, yeah. and the Xbox version did split screen yeah sure so. but in general people play the PC version no I think oh, although Minecraft, I don't know yeah. yeah I don't know I did see a kid playing the 360 did, version I wouldn't have thought very many people play the Xbox 360 version split screen a lot no they probably, probably play it over the internet. Yeah, I expect so. I, I for one miss it. I think it's. Uh, yeah, well, um, that's why we've got our, our indie games from people like us going. Remember this? Let's let's yeah. play Nidhogg or whatever. now. Now we also now it's up to us to put together the scenarios in which we might actually play these games. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and then we can't. Like, well, that's the thing. Fuck. I mean, like in London, with um, I didn't go, but Ho went to like a whole indie event where everyone was getting together playing Samurai Gun effectively in like a. A club or wherever cool. it was. Yes, they were doing. I can't remember what it was called, but like a game jam thing. No, but game jams are about coding, aren't they? Yeah. No, no, I can't remember. No, jam, yeah, jams are normally about development. But... Yeah, that's right. No, I can't remember what it was called, but it was something. It was because they had an Oculus Rift and you were trying out. Oh, um, cool. What's it? Um, Do you see that someone made a version of um, yeah. the first of the NES Elite. Zelda game for Oculus? All oh, right. Oh <laughs> yeah, I think I may have seen that. I, don't, I think I would, that would make me very ill. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, the game itself makes me a bit ill, I think. One of the times, <laughs> that first one. It's really quite I've never cool. actually played it. Yeah. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've played any of the quite like, hard. 2D Zeldas properly. I, I played the one on the Game Boy, the uh, Link's Awakening DX, mm. the colour version. That was really good. But yeah, I didn't. And Zach played, you played Oracle of Ages and Seasons. Well, I played like all of the Game Boy ones yeah. somewhere or another. Yeah. Lost Gems and the third one. Uh, Link to the Past. one I would really like. Yeah, to. that that one's a classic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I keep saying to myself I should probably go try and actually play some some of the SNES things that just passed me by that I've always sort of like looked at from afar but never really sunk my teeth. So that'll be another video we're making. Rob plays Metroid. Link. <laughs> yeah, maybe. What, Super Metroid. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Not the NES one because that's NES a bit one. too ridiculous. Yeah, but of course the new the new uh, Link. Between Worlds is very much part based on based Link in to the, the Past, one, yeah. Yeah. and uh, John Bomber were very keen on that last year, mm. and I was insufficiently keen. 
Well, it got Game of the Year from a few Did places. No. No. I That's what I meant. <laughs> Probably if you played it, you'd like it. No, I don't know. I don't think, <laughs> I, I don't think it's enough. Because <laughs> I, I don't have the hell of the sound for that. Well, it's alright <laughs> because it is actually mixing up Zelda more than usual because it has that, like, well, get items in different yeah. orders and shit. Except I wouldn't have just... called that, like, that. Well, All it really means is, like, everything will be more generic, surely. Because it's I like, if you, if you don't have any, if you, there's no, there's no if, there's, if there's no first place to go to to yeah. give you the shitty items. Yeah, it doesn't mean there's no difficulty curve. A bit like when you're playing, like, I don't know, Borderlands or something, there isn't really much of a difficulty curve mm. in, in games like that where everything's levelling to you. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. It's uh, certainly not based mm. on levelling like a traditional RPG. No, no, that no. would be too much of a departure for Zelda. I don't think they would go that way. No, no. But, uh, unless, apart from they're probably going to do that in that. Dynasty Warriors yeah, thing. Yeah, Dynasty Warriors Zelda. Oh, right. Was it called Hillian yeah, Battle or something? something? Hillian bullshit. It's the other thing about me having a Wii U. I'm going to have to get a copy of Sonic Lost World so I can try that stupid Hyrule DLC. For... I saw some, I, I'm sure I heard someone, maybe on the podcast, say Hylian one day. Hylian. I'm like, no. Yeah, no, I've heard that before as well. I'm sure it's Hylian. I, well, it's, 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 well, be, that's the thing. I'm not sure be, actually because it's always it's always written, isn't it? No one yeah. says it. But it's higher rule. But I would still say Hillian. Or was it Hero? <laughs> Hero. Hero. Yeah. I'm sure someone probably has said it. There's been enough soldiers at this point that have had a smaller amount of voice. Tiny, tiny. No, but they're always like just like, hey. <laughs> that's true. Because I noticed on the on the Dropbox settings page the other day that the security icon is a shield, but it's the Hillian shield. <laughs> oh, cool! It's like, oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Hillian. Yeah, I suppose it doesn't. Mm, yeah, maybe that doesn't work. I'm still saying Hillian. Yeah, so fuck you guys. Hyrulean. 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 Sorry, that's what I think it should be. Hyrulean. <laughs> sure. Well, uh, what did they say when they went when they, when it was in? Uh, the Majora's Mask. Because that, that place is called Terminal, wasn't it? Yeah, but there, <laughs> wasn't, a, there wasn't a shield based on that, was there? Or, yeah. Did you still get a Hyrulean shield in Terminal? I can't remember. I don't think you did get that shield, did you? I, I, I No, I can't remember what you got in 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 um, that game. We got any other news? Really be yeah. Terminal. Terminal shield. Terminal shield. <laughs> so, uh, news! Marty O'Donnell mysteriously sort of fired. Yeah, from it's, it's not clear because there's been he his tweet was uh, read basically that I will no longer be working for Bungie without cause. Yeah, or something suggesting that it came as a surprise to him that he is no longer, or that he's handling his dismissal in a sort of unprofessional way. Potentially, <laughs> is, is the alternative. Yeah. Um, now, the interesting part of this is that he's already penned quite a lot of the music for Destiny. Well, he's, he's done, done some. Him and him, because he was working with Paul McCartney and stuff on this. Exactly. Like, so, presumably, his work will make it into Destiny in some way. They've confirmed that, apparently. Uh, okay. His music will be in Destiny. But then, moving forward with that franchise, presumably, he's no longer involved. No. Uh, well, if Definitely. They, if they're choosing to make it a franchise, or if Destiny is just a one off. I guess that would depend on sales. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing. I mean, he does define Bungie, like in ter- in in terms of you know when you associate the audio of those games. It's certainly Halo. Yeah, you think of that Halo thing, don't you? Yeah. Just yeah, but as always, awesome. it's like how difficult is he going to be to replace? Really? Well, this is the thing. This is the other argument people have been making that okay, if you're going to go in a dramatic change of direction for the feel of your soundtrack, can one can you get the same guy to do that? I mean, Marty O'Donnell does have a style. Yeah. Like all of that. But then he's always been working within Halo, as far as we know. And I haven't yeah. heard any of the stuff for Destiny. The Destiny stuff, yeah. So. <laughs> I doubt it would have been that much different. I mean, name another video. That's the point. It's like if they, want to go in a, if they want to go in a different direction, could Marty O'Donnell do that different direction? So by dismissing him and getting a new guy on. Yeah, he, you said, just said he's already done it. <laughs> Mostly, probably. Whatever the music he was doing. It could be that he didn't agree with the direction they were going or wanted him to go. Um, maybe and there was like a creative difference it's, it, yeah it's, it's the timing of it that's weird it's like it's probably all done so yeah. they were like fuck it we're done with you man we don't need any last minute adjustments from here on we, yeah. we can deal with that Paul McCartney could do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll get an next people in yeah mysterious it was strange it was strange but 
you know, he's not he's not unlikely like most like I guess gaming celebrities. It's not unlikely to be out of work for long. I'm sure if I do something else, go okay, to some competitor, probably be doing the Titanfall music before long. <laughs> <laughs> what will you do? Well, exactly. They'll fix. He'll fix that. I don't want Titanfall's problems. There isn't just in the, isn't enough music. Well, there's no way to that put same. music. Really, there's, there's music playing a lot of the time. During the game, but it's well, like, Halo is proof that all you really need is the, all you really need is the title screen music I to guess. be awesome. <laughs> Halo actually has quiet times to have music, whereas Titanfall is just constantly other fucking sound is going on con- continuously. That's People good. are constantly saying things at you. Hmm. <laughs> or you're shooting. Prepare to be a tit and fall. Ah. Or you get that annoying, like the start of game uh, sting is always the same. In Titanfall, and it does get a little annoying. That da, 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 da. it's always at the start of every round you hear that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever noticed it. I don't, can't even recognise the bit of music you were just doing then. So apparently, it's not the start of every game. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it's not, unless you turned it off. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I haven't because I didn't edit any of the settings apart from turning all the graphics up. <laughs> Or, or maybe the PC version just doesn't have it. That would be the other yeah, alternative. That would be interesting. <laughs> all that uncompressed audio, they couldn't fit that one. Yeah, that one music <laughs> the only bit of music that I do recognise from Type 4 is the shitty menu screen title music that's not actually music. It's just yeah. like generic form for the form. <laughs> just like, yeah, just like background form noise form music. Form. Yeah, just sort of sound. Well, and then there are there's two different tracks, I think one for when the IMC when you're in the lobby for the IMC, like, in well, campaign. When, they, when, when you're in, the in campaign, campaign, yeah, they have, like, little actual actual music tracks, yeah. which are then obscured by the mission briefing, because yeah. <laughs> the missions actually have talking during the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> no reason to have any music at all, basically, is what, what we're saying. I don't know, it would be a bit weird without it. But... Not during the actual game, but during the menus and stuff, it would be strange. If it I guess it's there. the equivalent problem of... I know it's a different style, but it's the equivalent problem of TM2. TM2 has awesome music, but you don't hear it in the game. No, you only get to hear one track if you like by at well, random TM2 when you see it. TM2 has the has the has stings, and that's the bit of the, where they took the awesome music and then trimmed it down to like five yeah. seconds, and they just played it at the end of the, every round. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> You always get that bit of crowd speech. <laughs> no, you don't always get that. You only get that when it's a stalemate. <laughs> and that never happens. I don't know. I, I, depending on what server you're playing on. Because a lot of servers don't even bother with them, right? They have some dev. Has there been some stuff or incoming stuff to TF2? Like a long... Uh, okay, just dumping shitty items as they oh, are. Yeah, I don't okay. think there's been a proper update to it for a long time. I mean, there was a, those couple of levels that was relatively recently. Oh, well, yeah, that. I think that's what I'm thinking of. I think they did a somewhat update, hmm. which is unusual these days. I yeah. can't remember it's what those levels even were. I can remember one of them, so maybe one of them was okay, <laughs> as in the one that I see, which means people must like it, because it's it gets like, voted for. It's like we think it's still popular in terms of people playing, but it's lost its zeitgeist in terms of yeah, it's how interesting... Likes. Yeah. Now. Mm. I wonder what they'll do because they can't. They can't. Yeah, three. I don't know if that will happen. I don't know. They can't catch three anyway. Can they? <laughs> that's true. That is true. Maybe that's why the Left 4 Dead team aren't being published by Valve and they had to make Evolve. They might do something. They might still call it TF2, but they might move it to the new Source Engine and like new TF2. Yeah, or something. Yeah, and rebadge it or something, or do something. <laughs> But that might be a problem because they've got all these assets that would need upgrading. No, they could just not do that. <laughs> and then everyone who like what, reset everything. Yeah, everybody who like old school DF2 would be like, yeah, yeah fuck yeah. this. Yeah. Fuck all your stupid hats. <laughs> that would be awesome. It would be crazy to see like the, the characters in like the detail that's in the... the yeah, the, I, don't the, think like they, the, I don't think you put more detail into that world because the whole point of it is to look kind of weird. Well, no, you, could always, you, could. you could always up the texture detail. Well, yeah, that's like the, the ground pictures and stuff. And, you know, char- the characters are, aren't as jagged as the world is. Probably do more with lighting, a la sort of Bioshock, sort of, I don't know. Like, you, yeah. Maybe. Infinite was sort of along those lines. Sort of maybe. cartoony in a way, yeah. It was it was the kind of same period of, like, 1910s, 20s cartoon mm. cartoons. That's where the, the aesthetic for TF2 kind of comes from. I'm not saying they're that similar aesthetically, but in some ways... 
No, I mean they could obviously, yeah, they can obviously do some better stuff, effects and lighting wise, if they want to. Do. Yeah, it's in a stylized way, mm. not in a realistic looking way. But yeah, you know. But, but yeah, you're right. They, they wouldn't need to up. I don't think they need to up the poly count too much in the world. They could probably put more right. stuff in it, but yeah. you know, the pot. That's what I mean, the rocks and stuff and their sort of strangely jagged nature is the style. Yeah, yeah, and it's, absolutely. They, they've sort of worked within limitations to make that style, and it's cool. The, you know, the build, but then when you think about some areas, like some of the buildings are just a a polygon. Yeah, quite blocky, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, two yeah. triangles. <laughs> Let's scope for it a little bit more. If they wanted to give a facelift, they could, and they could pull it off. But I don't know if they will. I, I, yeah, I wonder if they like can the, are Valve backing themselves. That's an interesting question, actually. Are Valve in some ways backing themselves into corners with <laughs> games like TF2 and Dota 2? Um, in that. If they were to ever make a Dota three or a TF three, does that disaster. does they have to does does the game have to have died and died for long enough mm. for them to introduce the the next one and be all like, hey, this is amazing and new, and you don't have nobody cares about all that previous stuff. Not really, um, because it's just like it's not like Call of Duty doesn't come out every goddamn year. <laughs> At this point, you release TF three, and everyone will go to it pretty successfully, I imagine. Yeah, maybe. But then TF two has been out for like. Eight years or something. Yeah, has, yeah. Even without all of the assets in the store and all the stuff all that the actually maps. make money. Yeah. Or oh, assuming it's a new game and it's not just a reskin of TS2, then yes. <laughs> Opportunity they, to spend yeah, more money. Shift the balance of the, all the nine classes somehow. It's, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I, it's just, that's just an interesting thought to me. It's like yeah, Dota may be a more risk, I suppose, because of like, the sheer volume of random stuff. I don't think that I don't think they there's anything to do for a new engine for that because it's already they like, kind of already fixed what was wrong with the last one because you're already looking at a top down RTS thing and wow you can zoom in and that's totally useless for actually playing the game so there's no reason to do it <laughs> so they never need to make super high volume count models for virtually anything no it's true you're kind of done there aren't you and that's quite recent it's only just come out for for real for real yeah I'm struggling with more actual, real, news. decent news. News, yeah. Off top of it, nothing else was that interesting to me the last period of time. Well, you've been playing some games then. I have. Hurrah! What have you been playing, Robert? You're starting with me, huh? Oh, Robert. Okay. <laughs> the full name. I have played through Far Cry Three Blood Dragon. Ah! Oh. I've played through all of it. Awesome. Laser dragons and Laser shit. Laser dragons and neon and cyber everything. Pew pew. Cyber everything. And mega nerds. Or mega, yeah. or whatever. mega shields. There are mega shields. Right. And just nerds. I don't think they're mega oh, nerds. Right, I okay. think they're just nerds. Just nerds. Okay. <laughs> What's the deal? Like, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. It did sort of... I, I was really sceptical about it, actually. Like, I was excited to play it, but then after the first hour... Yeah. Something wasn't gelling with me, right? And I think that's because I wasn't entirely sure what I was getting into in terms of Far Cry. Right. Not in terms of Blood Dragon, if you mm-hmm. see what I mean. I kind of saw Blood Dragon as, oh, this is going to be a throwaway kind of run gunner. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, no, actually, it, it is Far Cry. plays pretty much a lot like how... Well, I've never really played a Far Cry game properly, but it's. Right. I think it, it must share an awful lot with Far Cry 3. Oh, it certainly does. It's, yeah. Um, it was released not long after. No, it wasn't, it was not wasn't, wasn't, wasn't long after, like yeah. half a year or something after. Yeah. It's probably something that they started working on since the moment they went gold with Far Cry 3, mm. even before they released it. Yeah. Well, yeah, there must have been some teams working in parallel, I guess. Maybe. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of that open worldy stuff, probably more than I was expecting. And it's you actually have to play it a little differently, I think, from the shooters I've been playing a lot recently. So it's you have to... Because it's not proper full regenerating health, it's got that that Far Cry Three style blocks of health system. Yeah. You do have to be more careful than I've yeah. been used to recently. So at first, I was kind of struggling with it. Yeah, and uh, and because it has stealth elements, I was struggling with those. <laughs> and it's like getting, wrapping my head around how things worked took a little, yeah, a little adjustment because it sort of throws you in a little. Like you get most of your guns right from the start. Um, there's a few that you unlock along the way, but you get like most of the practical stuff pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just like, oh, here's how things work. But it does have the possibly the best tutorial parody I've seen in a while. 
because basically your uh your comrade, I suppose your colleague, um, who's more geared up for computer hacking than you are, has basically hacked your HUD to force you to go through the tutorial as a joke. And so, oh, I see. And so as these mess- these super dumb messages are appearing on screen, like running is like walking only faster. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and you like Rex is constantly going, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So it's, that's pretty funny. What's yeah. his name again? He's Rex Power Cult. <laughs> Rex Power Cult. <laughs> awesome. Which is pretty dumb. And it's like, oh, the only sort of real problem I had with Rex as a character is his voice didn't seem to be the same as his face. Right. You know, it didn't seem like it matched too well because he's, he's very like this the entire time. And he's like, this is fucking awesome. And stuff like that. And then you see him and he looks a little bit like Ryan Gosling, I guess. Oh, right. Ways. You know, it's like, I don't imagine Ryan Gosling talking like this with the huskiness. Mm. Didn't look grizzled enough, <laughs> I guess. Even with his purple cyber eye. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Is it's, that where the hat comes from, his cyber eye? Uh, well, he's mostly cyborg. Right, think. okay. There's, there's not much of him that's real. <laughs> I think so, I was trying to think who you were reminding me of, and I think it's Sin- Senor Card Gage from... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's less husky and more like flat, like monotone. Well, no, it's not monotone because it kind of goes up and down, doesn't it? Oh, Think about okay. it. Anyway, sometimes. Okay. On the side, it was like the weird looking. Who look? He looks like Strong Bad, but he's got a big beer belly, and he's like and another like, alternate universe. And he, comment, yeah, so he's, like, he's right. an alternate universe Strong Bad, and he carries around like an Aldi bag for some reason or something. <laughs> well, he, he's like. Three for Nansen. I, I can't remember what the, what the origin was. It was some like one of the emails was like, kind of cool. It's a different kind of cool. Do you want the liver? It's like he, it was sort of imagine, imagining what he would like be like living on the streets, basically, That's or, right. no, or like being a creepy uncle or something. That's right. He carries a plastic bag yeah. full of melted yeah. candy bars. Yeah. <laughs> but then he just became an alternate universe thing, of course, as everything did in Strong Bad, really. Oh, it's got on me. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> sorry for that aside. Did you see that it, it updated on Halloween for the first time in like three years? What this Halloween? <laughs> this Halloween, yeah. There was a new tune. I can't remember whenever I saw it because were, it's been so long since the they were joking, update. They were joking about how they were, hadn't been on. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, well, that's yeah. one of the last well, you know, three or four updates. Yeah, I know. Where it's, <laughs> like, well, it's been like six months since <laughs> we did anything, and yeah. then six months later, it's like, oh, it's been like it's six been months. Like, <laughs> and now it's like, oh, it's been like two years. <laughs> Uh, anyway, Blood Dragons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, the, 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 the same. For opening, didn't, I didn't gel with it yeah. too well, but I kind of got into it after a while. Yeah. It's like, I don't know if this was true of Far Cry proper, but it seems like there's more world than there is mainline. Like, by quite some margin. Yeah, that was certainly true in Far Cry 3, but in a good way for me. It's like, because really, there's only like, Four, maybe, actual missions in Blood Dragon. Right. Like, four or five at most. And But then there's, like, about ten garrisons to liberate. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, That's a similar and, ratio. And, yeah, there's a lot of content in Far Cry 3. And so. a ton of stuff to find all over the map, like, just random collectible stuff in a pretty typical Ubisoft fashion. Yeah. In fact... As you pick up the television sets, Rex is making direct references to the Assassin's Creed franchise. Oh, really? Going, I hope I don't have to find any fucking feathers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Taking the piss out of the other teams. I mean, sometimes they go a little far with their... Um, Self-referential kind of humour. Yeah, or just, they don't... It doesn't feel like... like it, it feels like they try too hard with some of the jokes. And, uh, the, and it just doesn't really, doesn't really land. It's it's it works best when they're just going balls out crazy as opposed to trying to be clever. And it's like in in a sort of the way that it appeals to me kind of style. <laughs> sure, but, you know, it's just when they're being a bit random and a bit stupid that it sort of works. It's like when they're when they're being too thoughtful and too too far. You know, and just this, this, this is a little heavy handed. It's like, mm-hmm. Not so good. Not so good. There is a montage. So, you know, they saved themselves there. Well, you've got to have a montage. Yeah, so I mean, it's an 80s vision of the future. Any 80s film would be incomplete without a montage. Exactly. Even Rocky had a montage. <laughs> it's a pretty good montage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
How do they fit that in with gameplay? They don't. They don't. It's a cutscene. <laughs> that would be it's... crazy if you had a montage that be, gameplay. That would be pretty amazing. Yeah, like lots of little mini games. I guess like... that's kind of what you've got at the end of Bioshock Infinite is a kind of gameplay montage. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but still. You yeah. could sort of do it WarioWare style, couldn't you? Drop you into stuff real quick. and it's uh... Yeah. Yeah, you could. Yeah. And it's, got, and it's cool. got terrible music to go with it, which is fantastic. Um, <laughs> actually, the music is pretty great, actually, throughout the whole thing. It sets that sort of 80s synth vibe massively well uh, with the occasional like over the top guitar sting you know it's 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 pretty great for saying that and the visuals for the most part are pretty awesome as well like you know they get the neon effect pretty spot on nice. the only thing that i sort of don't like about it is because it's obviously built on far cry is that the the island itself when stuff isn't in neon or isn't sort of cybered up in some way kind of washed out because everything is in this sort of like uh, dark. dark, so everything's either like a very dark blue for most of the time. So yeah. the landscape itself is kind of dull. Whereas in contrast, the landscape in Far Cry Three is very lush and green. Exactly. And, and, yeah. You know. So this. there's yeah, there's obviously them trying to get sort of perhaps get over some of the limitations of what they're trying to do by using the Far Cry <laughs> as their basis, mm. and it's uh, it, yeah, some some of that doesn't really work. They try and get around it in places by just having here's a tree. I'm just going to make this more interesting. A mysterious pink light that comes from nowhere. Oh, right. And is just illuminating this tree. <laughs> so it's, it's radiation or something. It's something like I don't know. It's, <laughs> it, make, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But, so you could mainline that game because there's so few missions real fast. Yeah. But you have to... I think uh, the, the level of enjoyment you'll get out of that is how, you get, how much you get into just going about the world. Yeah, and it's like it's it's sort of alleviated a little bit by the fact that Rex runs super fast. Um, yeah, so you can just get about <laughs> without many limitations. It's like most of the sort of I don't know FPS sort of tropes, I guess, aren't really there because you like you run super fast. You can breathe indefinitely underwater. Right, you can you don't. There's no fall damage um, because you're cyber, and well, they get they can just ignore a lot of the usual, things that yeah. would be kind of annoying about getting around the world. Um, which is cool. So like most of the time, you actually think, is it going to be quicker to run it, or uh, is driving? Does driving have any purpose? <laughs> yeah. This? Most of the time, you just run it. So the cars are kind of yes. irrelevant, which is, and the gliders are mostly irrelevant other cool. than when the game forces you to use them a couple of times. But it's uh, so they they get around that. But then it's, it's sort How of do a they shame. 80s up the gliders, like there's just, they're there's just like yellow bits on oh, them, right, yellow okay. glowy bits. Just still it's like there's angles. a bow in the game, and the game's description of the bow goes as far as saying, well, it's a bow. There's not a lot very future about it, so we put neon on it. Yeah. <laughs> and that's as far as they go. Awesome. They, they just say that. It's like, well, there wasn't a lot we could do with a bow, so we covered it in neon. <laughs> Fair enough. And like they, they do things like, like oh, there's C4 in the game. Except it's not C4 because it's the future, so it's C400. Of uh, course. <laughs> it's, like, it's like C4, but with two extra zeros. But with more. Uh, they even do the whole like stupid self-referential stuff we mentioned earlier in like the hint screens and stuff it's yeah because like, Far Cry 3 for... had that a bit but mm. they must have probably expanded on it but it just says dumb stuff all the time like look out for hints on these loading screens <laughs> and stuff like that <laughs> top tip <laughs> look out for top tips awesome and uh so I, I ended up sort of pretty much going completionist on it. I did, every, yeah. I did everything other than the thing that I ended up disliking probably most about the game, which is the titular blood dragons. They're just a big irritation. Are they annoying? I find them found them just super annoying. It's like it's they they act like massive predators in that um, you can crouch if you're, if you're crouching and moving slowly, and they're in their green state. Yeah. Then they don't really pay you much attention. Right. But you have to. Then just go oh, bloody hell, crouch, go really slowly until right, I'm out of range of this dragon. Yeah. And it's like if you stand up, then they hear you and they right. go into yellow. I'm going to check out where I heard you state. And right. if you're too close, then they go into red combat state, which is super annoying because they're really hardy. Yeah, have to, they, they have a weak spot spot on their sternum, which right. is kind of hard to shoot when they're attacking you because they don't rear up really. Right. When you when if they if they're going to uh, for a melee attack. I don't think there's any real good way of avoiding them hitting you. Right. And they knock off quite a few bars of health yeah. in every swipe. Uh, it's like, actually, just so just fighting them becomes a real pain in the ass. 
Like one of the things the game encourages you to do early on is you can, in order to take over a garrison, you can kind of take advantage of that Far Cry esque um, emergent gameplay stuff. Oh right, try saying, and get yeah the blood dragon. To like, oh, there's the a blood garrison. dragon in the air. If you take down the shields, the blood dragon is suddenly attracted to all to the smell of cyber soldier, right? And so goes into the base and deals with it. But then the game does clearly sort of say. Oh yeah, but after that, the blood dragon's your problem. Right, yeah. And it's like, uh, no, I don't want to deal with that. Yeah. So I actually did most of the missions not doing anything clever and just killing Kill all the, the dudes. Everyone. Yeah. Um, and, and as the game went on, I did try and get, I got better at being stealthy. And because as soon as, if you, if you haven't disabled the alarms, then there will be more guys coming. You've probably got twice the problem to deal with uh, if the alarms come off in terms of a firefight. But firefighting's not all that bad anyway. It's kind of fun. <laughs> Some of that emergent gameplay really worked. Like, I had that hilarious story where I came up behind the, the heavy weapons guy and I was trying to stab him in the back and something went wrong with the with the insta-kill attack and I was just did a normal crappy, like like oh, a yeah, spy yeah. swipe equivalent. Mm. And then I thought, oh, I'm totally fucked. And then this bear just did balls the shit out of him. I'm like, holy fuck! <laughs> just run like hell. <laughs> yeah, there, are, there have been a few moments where that's great. Like, the, one, the best one, and it's, it's the stupidest one because it was the least, the one that affected me the least, really was that I'd just done one of the hostage rescue missions, and the guy was like, thank you, takes about two steps, and the blood dragon just goes, no! <laughs> it's like, all right, fine. Fair enough. Oh, <laughs> stuff is awesome. It didn't affect... It didn't... There wasn't enough, like, comedy emergent stuff, I suppose, right. because the the, the, the the wildlife very rarely interacted with the NPCs, and um, occasionally you'd, you'd have, like a, um, like, like, a jeep drive by, and notice you and start shooting at you. But of course there's a blood dragon nearby, so the blood dragon immediately just goes, eye lasers! And destroys, destroys them. And you're just like, yeah, okay, that dealt with that, move it on. Awesome. Um, but that was about as far as it went, really. It's like, I guess there wasn't... Maybe there aren't so many variables in blood dragon's world to, that can cause yeah. the crazy stuff to happen. Yeah, because there's more different wild animals, like obviously a lot smaller, but there's yeah. all, all different kinds in there. Far Cry 3 because you've got and some of them you know bears obviously dangerous but Komodo dragons are like super dangerous as well <laughs> various other ones yeah. and like tigers and shit or whatever there are tigers yeah because most of the wildlife isn't a problem like it is sort of early at the start of the game because you think oh wildlife I'll kill that but actually some of the wildlife is, takes a few bullets at the start yeah. of the game yeah. and it's like they can peck you and it'll hurt and but most of them you sort of end up in if they lunge you you end up in a quick time event and if you just get them off you then it doesn't actually hurt you at all like if you get, in, get into trouble with a crocodile then that's just going to insta kill you if you mess it up or if you succeed it doesn't, it doesn't uh, harm you, you in any way cool. and I don't think snakes can hurt you in any way either because they just bite you and you throw them off but they're neon snakes <laughs> of oh, course neon snakes. 80 snakes uh, yeah so I got about uh, probably spent about 8 hours on it to, to cool, that's, 100, that's 100%, 100% it I didn't 100% the achievements because some of them are like yeah um, kill 25 blood dragons and I'm like I've killed about three yeah it's not that yeah I didn't enjoy fighting them so boat to hell with it admittedly I didn't try it at the end of the game where I max leveled out all my weapons and all my uh, and all my skills so maybe it would have been easier towards the end but I didn't enjoy it before so I have no reason to believe it was enjoyable at the end no so you know sod that uh, yeah Ooh, anyway, yeah it kept me going Yes, I say, get over that initial sort of shock hump of I wasn't sure what I was getting into, and it's fine. So I did that. What else have you been playing? Uh, more Plants vs. Zombies. Yeah. I, I, actually, Some since the last time. time we podcasted, I don't think I've played any Titanfall, but I've played quite a bit of Plants vs. Zombies. Seriously? Yeah. Jeez. They had, a new, they had another free DLC drop, like the Zomboss Down uh, okay. pack, which introduced another Gardens and Graveyards level. And a whole shit ton more stuff, including more um, character variants and more customization options and cool. to, to, to get in the card packs. And it's like, so I'm still kind of impressed. That's three, I think, big, um, even, yeah, two or three big DLC drops for nothing in quick succession. Nice. And it's cool. Very cool. It's keeping me into it. And it's a, uh, yeah. So still recommend that. Go back and check it out if you haven't. Get the DLC. Cool. Nice. Uh, and the only other thing I guess I've really been playing a significant portion of is I started playing Trials. 
Trials, Trials Evolution. Evolution. So I haven't played Trials Fusion. Right, which okay. It just came out on Expo. Steam as well. Uh, I don't think it's out yet on Steam. I think I saw a, it might be pre order. There was some pre purchase stuff yeah. came up. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I've been missing, man. That game is awesome. Yeah. It's pretty great. It's like I've got the gold edition, so it comes with like all the new tracks from Evolution, and I think it comes with every track from Trials HD as well. So there's quite a lot of content there. And it's it's it's, it's one of those sort of like I, I I have to keep going until I complete this level stuff. Right, no matter how long it takes. Yeah. And so some it. some of the levels I mean, I'm pl- only playing medium difficulty levels but a, at the moment, but a couple of them are pretty hard. Yeah. And it's like but it, you just keep going and there's like occasionally some dumb shit happens that's like, you know, physicsy. Yeah. And it's just, it's just funny. And you're just like, <laughs> like, and so, or you come across a new level and they have got some really dumb mechanic in it. And you're just like, oh, that's cool. So it has? Says, uh, well, sometimes it's the stupid stuff that happens at the end of levels. So they're like, they're like fond of explosions and stuff. And one of the Aren't things, but one of the re- recurring themes is like, you could go through this end sequence, say, where you finish the level and you're just, you're falling off your bike because you fall off your bike at the end of every level. And then, but then some mysterious, like, uh, bombs with like the the sort of classic bomb looking shaped things with the like wings at the back just fall from the sky for some reason and blow you up and then you go flying across the map and then you'll land somewhere and then it'll sit there for a bit and you'll think well that was funny like just explosions and stuff and a piano will suddenly fall on you <laughs> okay <laughs> so seriously random crap yeah just just dumb stuff like that or uh like levels that are, have sort of physics elements and those are some of the more difficult ones like where you have to rely on um use of the physics happening around you in order to progress through the level like you'll get to a certain point which will trigger an explosion which will drop a crate on a thing which will then create a platform you're on to be raised when the thing lands on it so you have to time your approach just right to bounce off it and uh, uh yeah some other things like that oh there's an explosion that drops you and the sea you end on a seesaw and the seesaw flips you in such a way and then you have to deal with the outcome of that um or, or levels that are mis- like for some reason like a ghost town. You have these mysterious orbs flying around you and eerie sounding music. And stuff like that. It's it, they go a bit crazy with it. And uh, probably not as crazy as I was expecting because I sort of heard at one point that Trials Evolution had this had these bizarre like perhaps after track mini games that would occasionally occur. Like you finish a course, oh. and then something happened afterwards. Okay, um, but I haven't come across any of that so. I'd not heard of that. Maybe that was right. bollocks. Well, yeah. no, no, it could well be, isn't it? I mean, given the craziness of random piano dropping out the heavens and shit, <laughs> yeah. who knows what they could do? But yeah, I mean, they've got a pretty fun game already, let alone adding mini games and stuff. Yeah, well, they have mini games anyway, just not. Yeah, attached well, the, to yeah, they're, they're, what they're they call the, yeah, what they call the skill challenges. Which so one of them was ultra done because it's basically a distance challenge, like how far can you get before you fail, or 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 a minute and a half expires. But you're you're not on a bike. You're on skis. Awesome. <laughs> but it basically controls like a bike. <laughs> you have accelerate and brake, uh, and, and they haven't even changed the animation of the guy. He, he, it's like the way <laughs> the way he stands is actually quite a lot like you stand on skis. So he's put his arms out in front, and they've just put poles in them. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he's like crouched down on his knees and stuff, and he's like, mm. and it's like it actually looks kind of funny, um, like pretty close to skiing. Mysterious. Uh, it's just the fact that you know, you're aware the entire time that they know what they've built is dumb, and they're just making good use of that dumbness all the time. Not quite goat simulator level dumb, but no, no. But, you know, it's still a at the end of the day, it's still a um, proper game, a challenging game. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, uh, yeah, it, it comes recommended from me. We'll see how I get on with some of the harder stuff when I eventually reach it. And Sweet. It's... The one thing is, is like there was the much touted thing that the giant bomb guys always always really liked, which was that when you boot up the game, you get a rap. Like the game just sort of uh, has a really stupid rap, but I think it loads too fast on PC because it seems to fade out while he's still rapping. It's like, oh, I want to know where this goes. <laughs> I have to look it up on YouTube. But it's something. different every time I've launched the game so far. <laughs> it's nice. like it's a different song. It's like that's cool. <laughs> it's dumb but cool. You know what's not in, not in t- at all cool about it? Having to put shitty Uplay in there. Oh yeah. Well, that was the problem with Blood Dragon as well. It's like it relies on Uplay, and yeah, you know, I could have done without that. Oh, it's the fact that Evolution is even is super weird because it's a Uplay game, but it installs using an old school like install shield thing, and then and then went through an, an, an and then launched it, and it says Ubisoft Auto Patcher as a program opens. 
downloads this shit, and then goes through another install shield installer that I have to click through to, to, to set that all up the before shit. I even get in the game. It's like, so it's, okay, you've put it in Uplay that is one of these Steam-like platforms that should be dealing with this shit for me. And yet I have to go through some yeah, old school. I, I don't think Uplay actually ha- is a Steam-like platform. I think it's just a... It's like a Rockstar Social Club or whatever. It's just a login for a, for a registration. I don't think it actually has the managing the downloads or whatever. Yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, I think that's true. No, I thought Blood Dragon... Oh, no, Blood Dragon actually were downloaded through Steam. Yeah, well, yeah. I played Trials yeah. through Steam. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You see, my version of Trials is you play, not Steam. Um... So it was, yeah, it, it, Uplay did the download. Oh, okay. Um, but then when I fired it up, it went through this Install, auto yeah. patcher craziness. Wait, just downloaded and installed. Oh. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically. Hmm. So I, mean, I don't know, maybe Uplay does do that stuff, like for other things. But I can't say I've ever bought anything for Uplay. I got given this. So, you know, <laughs> not Uplay by choice. Cool. Have you uh, played much Trials in the past, or are you playing it recently? Not that recently, but I played, like, I don't know, a lot of it. <laughs> well, not that a lot of it. It doesn't really take that long to get through the to the extremely difficult stuff. I mean, I, I, I can't remember when I actually stopped, but I got towards, like, the actual hard stuff. I got through all the mediums and all the... The trouble with it is it's just, like, it's a bit... But it doesn't really explain itself in like the unlocking where it's just like you get you you do the first few levels and you can easily get gold on them because they're easy mm-hmm. obviously <laughs> but it's like oh you need this many more medals to progress because you have to switch to the what i guess are the old tracks like it's the warehouse the warehouse yeah you, you actually have to do that in order to progress but it doesn't really explain that <laughs> it's so just like you... you need more medals you're like well i already got the medals so did you have the gold edition as well yeah so i wonder if the non gold edition I thought well, I assumed the HD tracks were because it was the gold edition version of the game. That you know, this is what you got with it. Is a because otherwise it would. I guess it would kind of suck, like for people that already had Trials HD, and it's like, oh no, Trials Evolution has all the old stuff as well. Ah, oh. hmm. Maybe. So I don't know. But yeah, it but then again, Trials HD didn't come out on PC, did it? Don't know. Maybe. Maybe it's Don't know. But it didn't really explain that switching between levels, and it was no. Even, you're right. even then, it was a bit like kind of harsh in its unlocking requirements. Even then, when you're like, oh, there's actually a whole other set of levels, but you do still have to not completely suck. Yeah. You can't just bronze your way through everything. No, and that is a little surprising, maybe, because especially towards the end, that must get pretty brutal. Well, I've been trying to gold most levels. There's like, there's a couple I haven't managed thus far, and I'm just sort of like, no, this this level's probably annoying. I'll come back to that later. Or maybe when I get a faster bike. I don't know, can you take the faster bikes into the earlier levels? You can, but the trouble is like a lot of the earlier levels are designed for the speed that the earlier bikes go. Mm. So it'd be, having the faster bike doesn't necessarily actually make it easier. Mm. Interesting. But I'm still enjoying it. It's, it's, quite, it's kind of cool for like a sort of quick bursty little game. Like fire it up, do a few levels. Hope, hope that you're not playing a level that you just can't put down. And then... <laughs> I also I hope you're not there. Also, not. why? I know that there's no actual reason to have analog control, but why is acceleration brake not on the fucking triggers? It is. No, it isn't. For me, it is. What's what's wrong with your version? They were on RT and LT for me. No, it's on A. It's on the actual face buttons for some reason. It's just like not why do you do that? Oh, I think you. I don't know if you're just pushing the face buttons accidentally, but mine is clearly always saying use the you triggers. You can't even change it to the triggers. As- I, I don't know what you've done. That's not what, that's not my experience. Are we talking about the same exact game here? Or? But, I mean, as I said, there's no actual reason for it to not be face buttons because it's not like it's analogue. It helps. If you, like, jam down on the trigger sometimes, your bike just backflips. You have to, like, like feather it <laughs> when you're doing the precise... Ones. Oh, I get Yeah, I guess that could work. I mean, they must have thought of that for people playing with keyboard. Well, yeah, be, I must... can't remember whether I actually tried it on keyboard. Initially, because you can, yeah. yeah. It, but I mean, obviously, you would. I mean, you, they recommend if, if, in the, in the do, evolutions I mean, tutorials to like just give it a little bit of gas to, to go up hills without flipping over and stuff. Which, like, obviously, what you do need analog for is like spinning and le- leaning. Even though the le- analog, you don't have analog lean really because it's yeah, either your full forwards or full back, yeah, which is a bit awkward. I wasn't sure about that. Yeah, that that feels more digital. 
And that's well, the thing about that that sucks is like that you can't really get it back in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sometimes I'd like to be in yeah. a neutral lean. <laughs> well, no, I think the animation of the character is separate from the effect. I think the like whether your biker has lent has physically leant forward like visually, I think is different from the effect that you that you pushing the stick has, which which caught me out for a while. Yeah, that's kind of a shame in a way. Yeah, because sometimes it's real confusing because your your rider will sort of be stuck like right over the handlebars on a straight, and it's like you don't need to be there. Am I putting? Am I actually? Well, that's just because forward? it doesn't go back to neutral. No, it he just he just sort of flops in, around a bit. It stays in whatever position you set it in, mm. which is why it's stuck. Because if you don't, if you, I mean, it's a minor animation thing. It doesn't really affect your playing once you once. Like, I'm not convinced of... it's an animation thing because the trouble is that when you're in like full forwards and you have to lead back. You can actually, the force of it, like, flips you up slightly if you, if you don't, like, try and feather it back. Which could, like, if you're on an incline, you'll just go whoop and fall over backwards if you're going from full forwards to full back too quickly. Hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe my thoughts about leaning only effect in the air, maybe when you're on the ground, it does make a difference. It's just weird. You have, it's like you can't, you can't actually, you just have to, like, it's entirely playing it by feel, because there's no, you can't really do it visually. You're just, like, lining up, like, on the, when you're driving up a really steep hill and you're like, well, I, you have to, you don't go forwards, but then if you go, once you come to the top, you have to do something else. Like, you have to flip your weight to actually make you land on top of the hill, which isn't always, mm-hmm. You're just like, I don't really know what I'm doing sometimes. You're just doing things, and then sometimes it works, and then you're like, well, I guess that was probably... I think I can maybe replicate that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you might be right. It's like the first time for a level, I'm not sure I'm going into it with the mindset, oh, I, I know how to handle this bit of terrain. It's like, I'm just like, well, let's see what happens. And, and, there's then, a bit, and then I can and adjust. The other thing that I find kind of awkward about it is, like, there'll be a lot of times where you, you get, you'll start going, and you'll be like, you'll be doing good for like a couple of checkpoints or whatever but actually carrying speed through the whole level can just cock you up and then then you'll crash and then you'll reset and you'll be you'll reset to a checkpoint that you've just passed and you'll be going for a standing start and that's actually better <laughs> yeah yeah, that, 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 I've, yeah i've noticed that there's a few courses where that's definitely that must be true been. in the in real i'm no i know it's nothing like real motocross but you do have to stop in real motocross right or, yeah but there's, it's just like it's there's no there's no reason that you'd think to play that game like that, I guess. No. It's yeah. like once you get going, you think that's what you're meant to be doing because the whole point is to get through the level in one flawless run. Yeah. Until you know the level and then you know that, okay, I need to be, I need to actually sort of practically stop at this point. But then that becomes a challenge in itself in the single run to actually land in that right spot to stop. Yeah. And it's like, but that's cool. I don't mind any of that. It's like, that's the difference between gold running and silver running. You know, it's. It's like there's, there's more challenge in a gold run, and it's like I'm okay with that. That makes sense to me. I know. I I just don't think it, I I I'd like that in theory, but I just don't feel like it's precise enough. And that's just a that matter of fact of the physicsness of yeah. it, really. Yeah, uh, there's no getting around that. It's not like a. It feels a bit like you know when you're doing Meat Boy and you're doing those um like the levels with the physicsy things, like the repulsors. Like the rockets, and, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of thing. It's like suddenly some of the precision of the game feels like it's lost, even though there's no accident to it in Meat Boy. Yeah. It's like just the inclusion of those elements feels like you're a loss of precision. And it's like, if you were to... Now, in, in Trial's case, there's that, but there's also the fact that the physics like that you're just that you just control probably aren't quite so solid and quite so precise. Yeah. So it's like, there's always a bit of that. But then, it, but then it almost makes it even more satisfying when you overcome all of that. It's like when you get it right and you get the gold run on the level that's been annoying you for a while. It's I, don't really think cool. I, I don't think I was interested enough to actually bother to go back and redo anything. I was just like, oh, I'll get for it with silver. Isn't that be enough to unlock the next thing? Don't need to see anything more than once. I guess, yeah, because like that's that's the trick, isn't it? Seeing all the tracks, and then it's like because that's where all the cool stuff is. So you don't necessarily need the gold everything, but it depends what kind of completionist mood you're in. Well, I don't think, and I haven't tried any of the like the you know the extensive track library that people have built up. But <laughs> Insane. I already tried one that I couldn't shit. work out that was just called free riding, and it basically started you off in a circle. It's like, well, how do I get to these other circles? <laughs> it's like I can't work out how to make this thing open in some way. Or, but that might have been the challenge. I don't know. Mm. How do you make this thing open? What's the trigger? 
I don't know. Oh, I'm, enjoy- I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I think it's cool. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I haven't read anything about the new one, about Transfusion. Yeah, that's coming up, isn't it? I, well, say, I think it's already out on X-Bone. Mm. Um, Can't be that different, can it? Yeah, I don't know. What have they done? Yes, that's always the question. Mm-hmm. They gave it a trick system, which doesn't really do anything apart from give you another goal to fulfill in, uh, in the middle of levels, I guess. Oh, okay. I'm not so fussed about that. With what more Tony Hawk style scoring or something? Yeah, or like goals, like do a certain trick. I did wonder if any of trials would be possible with a third dimension. Like, or would it just be so unbelievably difficult? It'd be quite different, wouldn't it? But mm. you know, could be cool. Or something else. You can't. You have to. The whole point of the two D plane is to restrict you onto a track. Because if it was just yeah. point to point, then that's motocross madness, and that's not actually. No. <laughs> not really a track at that point unless you're actually doing track races in which case it is a track but that's, that's not really the same that's thing that's not like trials mm-hmm. the whole point of trials is to go over obstacles yeah not around them well it would be like well they have to do that when they define like be more like proper motor they? or whatever wouldn't it where mm-hmm. you have to balance on rails like you know <laughs> that would be done like, you would have to have an extra dimension of balance mm. in addition to the forward-back balance. You'd have to have side-to-side balance. Well, I guess the trick to that, the, you know, you'd have to define obstacles that you had to go over, like things within the course that you had to do. Mm. And if you didn't, there'd be an explosive crate or something. <laughs> well, in real, what do you call it? Is it called motocross? What's the know. trials thing where they do do that? Where they, like, yeah, where well, there's like, a courses. course. Yeah. And they do have, like, a tightrope. Bits where you have to go along a really narrow bit of... Yeah, or over some pretty awkward rocks or up yeah. an extremely steep slope without yeah. falling over backwards. All yeah, that stuff. stuff does exist. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what it's called. I think it is called trials, or some kind of trial, maybe. Yeah, yeah similar to... Uh, but those courses are, like... Those are incredibly thin courses. They're, like, mostly barely a metre wide most of the time. Yeah, it's that's true. Putting you on, it's basically on a 2D plane. Yeah, but... <laughs> so you, that's that game they made. They made. That's true. I know, but you'd have, but you have there to would be, that way. Yeah, there would be a third dimension of leaning to deal with. Yeah, <laughs> just make it harder. It would be interesting. I wonder if they could... I, I just wondered. I was just curious. I wonder if they could sure. pull off a Trials-style game. It'd be like, what was the Scream of All by Four? Or I guess, yeah. Although that was kind of interesting in its own way. <laughs> well, that was like the inverse. It was like you didn't have any lean control, which no. made it, that was the hard part because you had to not fall over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to take the right route, and... which is the same as real, real four by four trials or whatever mm. you call them. Yeah. Although you probably do some degree of leaning <laughs> inside. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Four and four yeah. And you can actually shift some amount of weight. Probably not much relative to the weight of the vehicle, but I guess it depends if you're in one of those little deep ranglers, you might get quite a bit. A little bit. Potench. 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 So, yeah, I guess that's all I really have. Those those three oh, yeah. are the main three I've been focusing on. I'm that... sort of in a holding pattern until my Wii arrives. Uh, <laughs> what, you're going to go straight into Lego City, the cover? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. That, that or New Super Mario, I guess. New Super Mario. Look forward to that whoop, whoop. shortly. Zach, what have you been playing over the past two weeks, this pre or past week and the week before <laughs> that? The, the one that came two before, weeks. It is a continuous <laughs> two-week period. As we mentioned previously. Like, what you might term a fortnight <laughs> if you were a British. Mm-hmm. Apparently. Well, uh, I played a lot of random little bits of things because I've been doing that again, I guess. And then I was like, and then I was trying to remember what I'd actually played. I was like, how did I actually spend time? <laughs> <laughs> That's the eternal struggle of of, uh, of Zagdom, isn't it? Didn't you have a job or something? I heard. No. No? What, what, well, what, what, what we sort of did for a bit. That wasn't really, really a job, but. What did you have? What were you doing? I was doing a work thing. But there you go. A work, work not job thing. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's pretty much it. An unpaid work. But then. Yeah, so it was just like, I don't know how I... I guess I played Kerbal, which, you know, that takes up a lot of time. Yeah, it does. <laughs> you don't really realise it. It takes up whole days trying to get into the right orbit. Well, it's just... It was the classic problem that I always said about Kerbal before, where it's just like, you don't... You have the time speeding up thing, and you think that that, you know, 
Because you're saving, you, literally days go by when you're turning the time warp up. But then when you're actually doing a maneuver, you don't realise that you're like t- spending 15 minutes doing one thing. Doing one turn, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just waiting, like, I don't want to overshoot, right? How much do I burn for? Oh, I have to burn for like so, 45 seconds, but yeah. I better start burning like before I reach the actual point. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then, as I also mentioned before, it's like even when you're in maximum time, or if you're doing interplanetary stuff, that's still like maximum time isn't maximum enough. <laughs> no, you still have to wait. Yeah, go and make a cup of tea while you're <laughs> traveling to Jupiter. Or... Yeah. So yeah, I played some amount more of that still fucking around with the asteroids thing because I'd already done the, I'd already captured an asteroid not in the actual not in the scenario missions that they made I did it properly just right. <laughs> pick a random asteroid and fucking fly to it and get it and that wasn't too difficult so then I, then I entered my actual old career save file where I was progressing through the science tree yeah. which conveniently I got to the precise point in the science tree where the, the grabbing thing was so I could just unlock that immediately and then do it again for actual science points but yeah so I did so I Got a really tiny asteroid with the first one, just with the grabbing and bringing it back and putting it in orbit. And that was fine. I was like, yep, that's still, that was not really any more difficult in non sandbox mode. Because okay. I guess I just had the right parts, okay. as well as the grammar. But then, so then I, I, I played around for a while more doing other science, you get more science, fiddling around with my stupid moon base that had where i made i very specifically made the moon base in a, in this way because you have the lab module uh-huh. which like increases your science output because you process the science in the lab module before you transmit it so it increases its value okay more sciencey science yeah <laughs> okay. so, so i built this i put like the base with the lab module in but then in order to get the science from the different environments which is how you get more science I was like, so I have to, you have to build a rover that basically has all the science modules on it. Drive out to a place, collect the science, collect the science bring it back, attach it to the lab module, then process it, purify, then transmit it. Purify the science. Yeah, then... purify the science. <laughs> yeah. So I was doing that, but then the trouble was I I built this goddamn base on the small moon, not the big moon. Right. I mean, it's the little one. Yeah. And even though I deliberately tried to make this rover unnecessarily large, when you're on, like, incredibly tiny amounts of gravity, like on that tiny moon, it's fucking impossible to drive, even right. though I deliberately made it super heavy. Extra heavy. Right, okay. It's like you get no grip. Although that does kind of make it easy if you're, if you're on the, like, because that, that moon has those super fat, has the super flat, like, frozen lake seas or whatever. It's just like a flat plane yeah. at sea level, and then it has hills. So they were like, if you want to drive directly across one of those big flat lanes, you just accelerate to whatever speed you go, and then you don't have to touch anything from then on, because you never actually have enough friction to decelerate, so you just keep going. <laughs> oh, okay. Because <laughs> the gravity's so low, and the friction is so low on your contact on the surface. It's just like cruise control. Yeah, you just start it up, and then you just have to remember to stop. Leave yourself enough braking distance. Could you get to the point where, I don't know, you probably can't bring enough fuel, but I mean, if you're on that low gravity, can you just like fly around with the RCS or whatever? Well, I was thinking about doing that, because that was my, that, that was when I was thinking about making that rover even more heavy. I was like, I can just put rocket boosters on Yeah, just fly around. <laughs> just fly to the other places and then drive to a precise spot. You're not going to need much thrust to like fly over the surface. No. But then that's sort of inherently more dangerous as well, I guess. Yeah, because you can just flip it. <laughs> yeah, because you can only fuck your <laughs> flying up quite badly. Especially if you're going fast. Yeah. It's like if you, when you're coming down to do a landing or just like when you're doing this, like cancelling your sideways motion. Yeah. That's only like a few meters a second. Yeah. You're not like taking off and then flying at like a hundred meters a second parallel to the ground. Yeah. And then having to stop again. Yeah. That's a bit more dangerous. Yeah. True. So yeah, I did drove around on that place for ages. And the trouble with that also, the other problem with that is that you can't time warp. While no. you're travelling over the surface, no. you can't time warp. And also because it's such a small planet, you can't even physics time warp. You can't even go to the times four speed that you can on, like, Kevin's surface. Yeah, so just fuck up. Well, also because, yeah, you don't want to do that, yeah. because that physics time warp always makes things yeah, explode. exactly. So, yeah, I, then, so after I got all this extra science from driving that science rover around... I built another asteroid devi- grabbing device, except this time I made the stupid, like... The only logical progression after you've got an asteroid into orbit is to get a slightly bigger asteroid, but then build a ship that has, like, four little individual extra gravity probes that come off that just have parachutes on them, and then parachute the asteroid down to the surface. Of course, I can't. <laughs> because why wouldn't you? And that worked 
way too well as it turned out. I was like, this is never actually going. I'm like, maybe I, I was thinking I wouldn't have brought enough parachutes, but that turned out not to be the case. Or like, I was thinking there's no way they're actually going to let you do this. Like, the asteroid will just spontaneously combust when it hits the ground because why would it not do that? Yeah, but, <laughs> but as that- it turns out. <laughs> You could actually get an asteroid all the way down to... Yeah, the asteroids totally just have a regular collision. But it doesn't. it's what? not actually really worth it, is the trouble. Because <laughs> when you're up there, you can take, like, the science. You get a special, like, surface sample, basically, off the asteroid. And the trick to, the, like, the science is you do it in different environments to get more science. So I'd already... I'd got this asteroid in solar orbit, so I was like, I get the surface sample in solar orbit. Then when I get it to the planet, do do surface sample in high orbit, surface sample in low orbit. And it's like, yeah, get all those different science points. And then when you actually land it with the parachute, that does turn out to actually recognise that it's in in a different environment. It's like, surface sample from this asteroid from the mountains. Ah. (laughs) And I was like, that's sort of good, except, unfortunately, it's not worth any more science. It's only the same amount of science as all those other places. Right. So then I was thinking, maybe you could just, like, if you've got a really small asteroid... You could just move it around. Yeah, you just build, like, a ship around it and just fly it to all the different planets. Yeah, and get all the env- <laughs> harvest the double the environment. Yeah, harvest yeah. all the environments for all the different Combination. planets. Combination. Combo environments. Yeah. Can you, if you cheat, can you, like, actually deflect the orbit of, like, a moon? Or are they fixed? Yeah, I was thinking about that. I don't imagine you probably can't. Yeah, probably not. I mean, you can hack, like, you can just hack the orbital numbers, but that's not really the same. Yeah, that's not the same. <laughs> you wonder, can you actually parachute the moon onto the Earth? That would be, <laughs> be mental. <laughs> that would be interesting if you yeah, could. Anyway. But it's like the asteroids are kind of... I don't... I think... Well, at the moment, the asteroids just seem to be randomly generated, which makes sense. Yeah. Because they, they don't stay around unless you're tracking them. Basically, it's like as long as you're tracking them, you lock it yeah. so that it doesn't disappear. Yeah. But I'm the trouble like cars is, cars and grab the door, like, yeah. And you're following it, it stays alive. But the trouble, the trouble <laughs> with that is that because they're randomly generated, like they're always on collision courses. Like, right, fifty percent of the time they're just immediately going to crash into the planet. It's like that's not very realistic, <laughs> right? Okay, because they wouldn't stick around because they'd have crashed no. already, right? And also they fucking destroy the whole planet, right? That is dumb because you'd have to. Yeah, because in reality they're in stable orbits because they haven't run into anything in billions of years. Yeah, and they're all they're all like right next to the planet, relatively speaking. Right. It's not like an asteroid belt. It's just okay. like asteroids around the vicinity of the planet. Ah, okay. It just happened being. And so there. obviously, quite a lot of them crash into the planet, and the rest of them have like quite like fifty percent of them crash into the planet, and then like twenty five percent of them have an orbit that interacts with the planet on the first pass, which of course flings them into a different orbit. Yeah. And occasionally you'll get ones which just like because of the stupid way Kerbal's like air physics works, you'll have asteroids that don't quite clash crash into the planet, but go to a low enough as- altitude orbit, in the as- right? into the atmosphere that they orbit the planet. Like they stabilize themselves just because of the because of the like air resistance or the imprecise physics calculation. So it's like I already it's like, I just have a C-class asteroid that's orbiting my planet without me having to do it because <laughs> it just got there by itself. Okay. <laughs> that's quite dumb. So yeah, that Kerbal. was that. Indeed. So you're not planning to play the actual scenario missions because then I was... Well, the scenario really... missions, from what I... I only looked at, like, the, the blurb of them. Yeah. And it's like, the scenario missions are like do stuff <laughs> the asteroid down. grabbing ship is twenty meters away from the asteroid and then like, grab it. Drive forward. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. <laughs> like, what? That's done. Yeah. And then there's like then there's the second scenario where it's like perform a burn to put it into an orbit and it's like that's the easy part as well. Yeah, fair enough. The actual flying to it is the difficult bit. And I actually ended up having to do that a weird way, because normally you know how you have like the maneuver nodes and you set it up so if you were going to the moon you'd like set up a node and then you drag it out and you'd be like oh here's yeah, where yeah. the intercept is and it creates a different like Colored orbit thing, yeah. yeah so it creates the intercepts onto the object but because the asteroids are so small and they don't have their own gravity well right that kind of doesn't really work so you have to kind of adjust the arc so they're kind of hitting it yeah so so you like what i worked out the best way to do it was is like you use the maneuver nodes to get it so that there's an intercept where it's like I don't know, a couple of thousand kilometers or something, yeah. which is still quite a long way away. But then, then basically, like, at that point, just do it old school. So, like, switch your nav ball into target mode, which shows you 
what direction the target is to you, relative to you. Yeah. And then just basically fly fly towards it manually. Yeah. So just like try and guess how what what your relative speeds are and then just try and adjust it so that you just fly there by yourself. <coughs> and that's actually probably the easiest way to do it. So yeah, that was kind of awkward. It, I, it's because they don't have... When you've got it switched into target mode, it, tell, it puts a marker that so, tells you this is the direction the target is right now. Yeah. But the the speed markers are, are... It's your speed relative to the target, but that's not really... That's like your overall speed. So like when you're coming up to the asteroid... 90% of your speed is parallel to it because you're still travelling along with it on a with similar it. orbit. Yeah. So you need to like cancel all of that, except not quite all of that because it's still moving yeah. as you're going towards it. So you still need to... So it's like... You, they need. It's like they just need a more relative. <laughs> you need to be able to plan ahead. I guess that's what the manoeuvre days are theoretically for, except for in this case it's too small a body. And they don't work, yeah. It's too precise when you're that like like that far apart. But, I mean, it's the equivalent of trying to rendezvous with your own other crop, right? So it's the same deal. Sort of, except... They don't have gravity world. Well, yeah, but uh, it's because it's all in solar orbit. It's like the orbit yeah. is so wide to start with, yeah. it's actually really difficult to make precise enough adjustments with the manoeuvre node system yeah. to actually get get it to go together. Mm. Whereas in, like, regular orbit around the planet, that's uh, quite a small range. Yeah, much easier. So, yeah. <laughs> there was that. And then thinking of all the small things that I played, well, I guess we there was quite a bit more Guild Wars because there was the mysterious April update, which was like they're done with the living story for now, so now they're doing like a regular ass like fixing things and making things better update. Of course, yeah. they patched a few things, didn't they? Like skins and yeah. What was the phrase you, you talked about this before briefly? But you get the, you gave it a name, didn't you? Like a, um... did I? Uh, quality of life, I think you described yeah, it. That's what they say. So yeah, it's like they've just sort of vaguely. Uh, it hasn't really changed that much, apart from s- sort of they've changed a few of the skills and stuff. Well, not really the skills, like the traits. So in some cases, it's like you. Well, basically, they reset all the characters' skill points or right. trait points, rather. So it's just like now you have to go in there and try to remember what you were even trying to do, and then be like. <laughs> Is the thing I was trying to do the same any longer? <laughs> so yeah, we went. We, Rob did that as well on his character, but I went through all my characters and remembered that I couldn't remember what most of my characters were for, apart from my main one. <laughs> but I guess it doesn't matter because they were most of my other characters are level eighty, so they're not far enough through the game that it even matters what they're spec for at that point. Just change it whenever. So we did some amount of that, and I'm nearly. I've nearly made it to 200 gold, at which point I can start spending gold. Because there's a fucking achievement for having 200 gold. And I'm like, well, I'm never going to get there if I spend it. No, you've got to <laughs> say, is there anything you want to buy that's expensive that you'll yeah. be able to afford with 200 gold? It's like, once I get to 200 gold and I can actually spend money, the first thing I'm going to do is, well, I'm thinking about spending like 20-odd gold to buy influence for our guild just so we can unlock more guild storage space because we never have enough space to store stuff, even though it's only me and Rob. <laughs> and it's just filled with food, though. <laughs> yeah, that is true. And excess materials. Yeah. But just imagine how much more space... Like, all our, all my bank space is full of... Yeah. You have and that was the thing that I thought characters. was going to be fixed in this patch when they introduced the skin system. Because a lot of the stuff that I have in my bank is like... Well, skins, basically. Mm. Like, things that don't necessarily have stats. Or some things which do have stats, but they're not the stats that I care about, but they have a fancy skin. Yeah. And I thought, oh, the skin system will solve that, because all these skins will go into the skin bank system. Except not really, because the item skins that I have that you get that you used to get from the events, they still count as, like, an item, because they allow you to change... to apply that skin to something without using a transmutation shard, which is what the new skin library uses to to change all the skins. Mm-hmm. So they're still actually worth basically keeping if you're ever going to use that skin, because they save you the transmutation charge of applying the skin to the object. Mm. So I'm like, 
I got rid of quite a few of them, like the ones that I'm probably not ever going to use, like the stupid watchworks shoulders that are just hella ugly. <laughs> I was like, I'll just unlock that skin by using one of those and then delete the other four that I've got. <laughs> so yeah, went through my bank and saved a few slots, but not enough. Unlock that bigger guild bank and then wow. spend a whole bunch of money. It's like now that once I get to that 200 gold and I can spend money, I don't know if I'm actually going to, but you know, I could start spending ludicrous amounts of money on high-level crafting and high-level items. It's kind of a rough part of, or a not-so-fun part of being in MMO land, is you have to make decisions about what you want to keep all the goddamn time. It's like, well, do, I, do I want be- all this stuff? Well, that's and because like, they want- Most of the time it's no, because, you know, uh, you will never, you should never care. But the completionist and the, I don't know, the gamers in me, it's just like, just... But keep everything, surely. Yeah. I can't even be asked doing that in Buddy Talks like too, let alone in yeah, yeah. Guild Wars. Well, it's because, in, I mean, in Guild Wars, they're preying on that because they want to sell more bank space. Yeah. <laughs> it, them, is, it is intentional, cash. and you feel it occasionally. You're just like, it would be really cool if I just had more... But you fucking keep, bank. like, old, old collected, like, tools, old harvesting tools that are totally useless because we're never going to go to the place where you can use them again. That doesn't take up that much of my space, like... <laughs> Maybe four slots. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's things where I'm not so I, I I'm not so involved in Guild Wars. I don't know whether they're relevant or not. Well, it's yeah. the stuff that kind of annoys me. It's like I, I'm sure I have a few items hanging about where it's just like, do I want this? Or I've got blueprints hanging about in my bank on the off chance that once we finish the main story, we'll do World versus World, World versus World stuff or something. But like the thing that. is, are you and even going to deploy those blueprints? Yeah, that's the other you, thing. Is like, would I just keep them because I know they're consumable? Are, are they just well, gonna... and because you wouldn't necessarily know what to do with them, even. Well, yeah, that's because true. it's like you just you probably <laughs> yeah. just end up wasting them by accident. I'm you'd be like, oh, I built this, I built, built this catapult in a place which is not actually helpful <laughs> to our team. <laughs> But that's what I'd be playing with you, presumably, because I don't play. Well, it. I don't so know that stuff either. Uh, I haven't had a goddamn blueprint. Hanging it out, taking up space. God damn it! So yeah, that's Guild Wars. And then I also didn't really actually play FTL because I advanced edition. Well, no, that's why I didn't play. I played regular FTL. Ah, fair enough. Maybe, uh, partly so I could like get back into it and remember what the fuck that game was like, but also to see like you can still see some of the advanced st- edition stuff in the regular game, but more like the UI improvements and stuff. Cool. Hmm. Which is quite nice, actually, in some cases. Like, there's just a button to save what position your crew are in, so after you've fucked around at the end of the, end, at the, end of the fight, you can just go, go back to where you were. <laughs> go back to your proper location cool. <laughs> with uh, one that's, button finish. That's, that's neat, actually. And there are some actual gameplay changes that have trickled down as well. Like, now you can man the door system and the sensor system with extra crew, which is actually funny, because it's like... You can level up your doors beyond level three now. You can have level four doors if you have a dude in the door control room. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you can have super hard doors. That could be quite useful. I never went past level two doors even before. Because the, the, I, did, I didn't think it was worth the cost to go to level three doors. Mm. Level two doors slowed them down enough. And fires and whack. But the sensor room, putting a guy in the sensor room is maybe actually worth it. Because whoever fucking upgrades their sensors... <laughs> Mm. So if you've got an extra crew member, you may as well put them in there and just get an auto upgrade. Free upgrade. So yeah, that was that. Played some more of that. And, and also, unfortunately, well, sort of annoyingly to me, it unlocked one of the ships that I didn't have because they changed the unlock progression. Uh, so you sort of already had achieved it or something? Well, like. no, it was because... Well, yeah, I'm sort of, I guess. Because what they've done is now you can unlock all the ships in two different ways, which is either you do the quest line that appears in the game, mm-hmm. or you finish the game with the previous ship, or get to sector... I don't know if you actually have to finish it, or whether you only have to get to sector 8. No. So if you d- get to that point in the game with the the previous ship in the unlock chain, then it unlocks the next one. And I'd already got the previous oh. ship in that chain, and it unlocked the one that I didn't have. <laughs> that seems quite a lot easier. Yeah, it is kind of a lot easier. And so I was like... I don't want to use that ship. I didn't. I didn't legitimately earn that ship. I still haven't got the secret ship because that's on its own li- like little separate panel where it's like you don't get that one just from having the previous ones. So I still don't have the secret ship, and there's only one new ship in the advanced edition, which is the other thing. It's a weird ship. It basically has like some of the new stuff: the clone bay and the hacking, and the new alien dudes. Cool. 
the, the new alien dude seem possibly awkward. Because it's just like they they don't need to breathe, which you think is awesome. Because mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. But it's, it's slightly actually worse than that because they don't need to breathe, but they also suck all the oxygen out of the room. <laughs> So oh, it's not wow. just they don't passively need to breathe, they actively make it non-breathable. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite funny. Which has some so like tactical implications, you I'm sure. You just put them in a room with fire. Yeah, exactly. They're good at putting out fire because they just suck all the oxygen out while they're fighting the fire. That's cool. <laughs> that could be real interesting. And I bet that would be interesting for, to be a boarding party. Oh, yeah. Have two or three of them as your boarding party, and then whatever room they go in, all the enemies take extra damage. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of cool but then you won't be able to set fire so. you don't set fire things on while your crew's there <laughs> ideally <laughs> so yeah I haven't actually done the advanced edition stuff yet I and also I'm not sure whether they've changed the balance of the old game but I came across a couple of situations on the couple of runs I played on the on like normal difficulty of the of the non-advanced edition where I was just the like yeah. yeah, where it's just like wow that enemy was ridiculous where okay. just like suddenly I'd come across an enemy that seemed like super ridiculously upgraded compared to what the other enemies I'd just been fighting were and then it just destroyed me and I was like well shit hmm. that, was that intentional or was that just a totally random occurrence because there was one case where I just it was like it's not good if they screwed up the balance by patching the previous one. Yeah, well, I mean, like I said, when you can man the subsystems, that actually does sort of change the balance. Yeah. And I did notice a couple of new events had trickled into the old version. Like, there was a place where you can hire mercenaries that wasn't a shop where you'd normally hire dudes. Mm-hmm. And, like, a lot of the shops now have two pages. Ah. So they have, like, more different stuff available per yeah. shop. Cool. So, yeah, that kind of changed things. But yeah, I jumped into this situation where I had the long-range scanner so I could see what was coming up, and the route I had to go through, where I didn't have a choice, I had to go through, was two fucking iron storms. And I was like, shit, I hate iron storms, because it basically means you can only use half your capacity, like, half your reactor energy, which inevitably means you can only have half your systems turned on. So I walked into this thing, and there was, like, an enemy there, of course, as there Mm -hmm. would be. And I was like, well, shit, I'll just turn on my shields have maximum shields sure. and just like sit there and then maybe basically I had all I had turned on was my maximum level shield so full four bars of shields and like one laser that penetrates shields sure so I was like eventually I'll kill this I'll thing. get through it eventually I'll just bore through <laughs> I just have to shit. sit here and tank it but I couldn't it's like it turned out I couldn't tank it like somehow this enemy because the same iron effect applies to the enemies as well. Of course, So yeah. it should have had half capacitor, but it was still running more than enough guns and drones to get through my fucking fully max level shields. Oh, damn it. And I was like, well, fuck. And then before I realised that what I should have done is turn my engines on and just walked out, because I didn't have my engines on at all, my jump drive wasn't charging wasn't while ready. I was figuring this yeah. out. And then it was too late. You couldn't jump out. No, no, it dropped. <laughs> Boom. So that was kind of sucky. DL. Yep. That was that. I wonder if I can play that on... They're getting me a laptop, <laughs> but it'll be a Mac. Right. I wonder if I can play that shit on a Steam, if I own it, which I do. Uh, yeah. Be, yeah, almost certainly. Yeah. Probably. I wonder what I can play on that thing. Mm. Although I did notice when I was playing it, it, like, it uses an unusually large amount of my CPU file. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm like, that's weird. I guess it's just... Thinking. Uh, yeah, like lazily optimised or something. Like, even on the menu, it still uses a weirdly high amount of power. Really? Yeah. Mysterious. That's the screen. So yeah, that was that. And then another thing that I also didn't really play that much of, but there's not much more to say about it, I guess, was more Bravely Default. Oh yeah. Because I got... You get to the end of that. Sort of. I got to the fourth world, <laughs> after we've been through these parallel goddamn worlds, and it's gotten to the point where basically your team has finally figured out that the fairy is the evil guy like they finally come to the conclusion that th- this was the bad guy all along and <laughs> maybe we shouldn't have trusted the fairy as much as we did or oh no what have we done yeah Lol. mainly because mainly because one of your the guy on your team who had amnesia from the start of the game <laughs> he gets his memory back and he remembers oh yeah he gets his memory back and he re- remembers that he's actually from like world minus one he was like from the world before where your team failed and died and he got sent through by himself ah <laughs> But now there's four of you, so maybe you'll be able to do better. But yeah. But then, so you get, 
at the point where you're getting to world getting to world four and they finally decided that obviously the fairy is the evil bad guy as if that hadn't been hell obvious all along to me at least <laughs> and then so that and then it's like it's sort of your team is sort of getting to the point where it's like it's not all fun of games any longer they're actually sort of getting pissed <laughs> where it's like we have to do this fucking shit again <laughs> <laughs> but then so I went into World 4 and like they discover from the guy getting his memory back it's like the the fairy the pattern on the fairy's wings is in the shape of a number and it's counting down with every uh, world we go through ba, ba, bam. and so logically you would think that means kill it fucking now don't let it count down any further but no apparently we're going to make it count down to the to zero because <laughs> for no apparent reason no, we're supposed to not do any of them actually know what's going to happen <laughs> well no but which which in that situation where you don't know the outcome in either case, which one do you think would be the better outcome? Kill it now or wait for this number which is going down to finish going down? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She, might, she might be your only ride back to where you were, though. I don't think it matters where you were because you're just like, you're in a parallel world that's exactly the same, <laughs> pretty much. Just a few minor differences. So yeah, I got to World 4. But now the first World 4 is where they've started remixing the bosses, where it's like, you get fucking basically three bosses as one fight. Okay. And the first one of those I've come across sucks. Mainly because it's a... You fight, you fight this black mage guy, and in the previous world, you fight him by himself, and he's well easy, because he's, yeah. like, one of the first jobs that you get <laughs> is black mage, so he sucks. But then in, in this world, it's like, you f- come across him and you fight him, and it's like him and his pet dragon. Mm-hmm. And the dragon's really only there to just increase the damage output because you can't really attack the dragon because he just heals it. Right, okay. <laughs> so you just have to you have basically to ignore the him. dragon yeah. and just kill him real fast. Before they burn you. And it's like, that's fine. So you can spec yourself for like magic, fire, resistance and then just counter him or whatever I have as my plan. But the trouble with that is once you kill him, it transitions immediately into another boss fight where two more bosses turn up. <laughs> okay. So it's him and two other guys. And that's kind of awkward. Because you're having to, because those two guys that turn up are like not magic users, you they're can't physical spec attacks. Against them. Right, yeah. okay. So you can't, so, but then, so and then. trying to pick your team for the Elite Four. Right? Yeah. So then after I, after I worked that, work, once I'd worked out that that happened, like the first time where I got to that point and just immediately died because I wasn't ready for yeah, it. Yeah, you didn't want to expect it. So I was like, okay, I'll slightly respect my team to try and cope with that transition. So I, I got myself into the correct, like, I figured out a way to get into my usual pattern of basically just, just direct everyone to the guy who counters everything. <laughs> and so it was just chipping away their health with counters really slowly. But the trouble is the, what, the one guy who attacks you the most, it's like it's not the wizard dude and it's not the knight dude, it's the other dude. He attacks you the most, so he gets countered the most. Mm-hmm. But when his health gets down to like 20%, he basically just starts exploding. <laughs> <laughs> he basically explodes every turn and does like 3,000 damage to everyone on the field including the enemy team which is sort of nice apart from you can't survive that <laughs> it's like if it was just him by himself you could potentially just defend and he'd kill himself by exploding three or four times you'd be defending and absorbing the damage but because there's these two other guys who yeah, are also dudes. doing damage yeah. you can't survive that much damage so that killed me and I was like am I just going to have to fight this thing where I'll just have to heal him to prevent him from going into explosion mode until Definitely. the other two are dead <laughs> I don't know but you'll get through it. Maybe your counter tactic is the right tactic. I can't imagine what other tactics there would be. Um, well, I think that's maybe one of the things that I discovered about like later parts of this game. Is just like once I discovered the counter tactic, is like there's basically the two tactics that I use is either the counter everything tactic or the evade everything tactic, <laughs> which is like you either use the swordmaster who has counters for. You have, like, different counters depending on what you want. You either have you have a counter that reduces damage against physical attacks and counters. Uh-huh. You have a counter that reduces damage against magical attack and counters. Or you have a move where you pick an enemy, and when you take damage from that enemy, it's you do a super reduced. counter. <laughs> right. Well, that could work. You could use that against the... Sort of, except it has to be a single target attack. So that doesn't work against the mage dude, because he does everyone attacks. Right. Okay. This is- like area of effect yeah. over your whole team. So, it's, and also the one where you pick an enemy target doesn't reduce damage, which also oh. means you'd be taking a lot more damage right. with that one character. So yeah, and then there's the if you're not playing Swordmaster, you could be a ninja and just have the evade everything attack <laughs> plan. But that only works if that only works if you're only taking one attack per person on a turn, basically. Which you're not if there's three no, bosses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Those are the only good tactics I've discovered. Mm. But yeah, I think I'll probably make that tactic work. It's just a matter of... I thought I was going to do it on the latest attempt, and I got to the second set of bosses and in the transition, but then, as usual, as is traditional, the one one of them got a, got a lucky critical hit and it knocked off too much health, and then the guy I was using to counter died, and before I could get him back up, they killed everyone else. In like a domino. Yeah, yeah. it just all fell apart. Yeah. It's always the thing that sucks. Next time. If you just get an unlucky critical at the wrong moment, it that, all fucks up. That's the end of it. Can't so, yeah. see the time on this goddamn audacity bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Give me my gold wave bag. It must have been forever. Do you want Mexican Rob to tell you? Because I can tell you from here if you want. Yeah, you sure. Mexican Rob. Mexican Rob. All right. Mexican Rob declares 20 seconds. Seriously? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That gives you 10 seconds to talk about going <laughs> home. But no, yeah. we can keep going. Okay, well, I played Gone Home. Uh, you haven't got anything else? <laughs> I probably do, but not important. Uh, it was good. It's only two hours, probably worth of content. Mm. Uh, it's quite sweet. Uh, it's a nice story. Check S- it out. Sweet in the emotional sense yeah. or sweet in the uh, payoff sense? <laughs> in the emotional sense, it is, in mm, fact. Sweet, sweet, sweet. It's a sweet story. It's yeah. sweet. It's very sweet. touchy. Yeah. Quite touching, quite nice. I, I think they could have put a bit more detail in the environments, given that's all there is to the game. I mean, not right. to the like letters and stuff. They were beautifully done. Mm. Like, all the handwriting and everything. But the actual house, it's a bit... Like, I was hoping a little bit more detail. I, I was hoping for, like, a um, like a modern kind of... Not that you could quite recapture it, but a modern kind of Shenmue. Look, I'm opening drawers and shit in this house. This is oh, fucking right, yeah. insane. And wanna, it is a bit Shenmue like. You want to be able to open everything. Yeah. And go into every nook and every crack. Well, you pretty much can open everything and look at everything. Can and it works. Like, cranny nicely. without a nook? I don't know. It's just a thought. Like, nooks and crannies are kind of the same thing, aren't they? Well, well yeah, I don't know. They're supposed, What's they're, the difference between a nook and a cranny? And crannies. <laughs> It's like people use nook more often, though, don't they? That I'll yeah. put this in this nook. You can, have, don't a, you can have a nook on its own. You don't go. I'm just going to shove this in the cranny. <laughs> in the cranny. That's true. Not so many crannies. Yeah. Um. Don't pay too much for it. Check it out. Play it. Uh. And you'll be done. And it's good. Is there well other than the lack of perhaps detail in the house that you yeah desire? Is there any? Well, I don't know. That's that's very basically. It's is it, there anything you can say without spoiling it? I suppose is there well. I'll say this, there's one main story, mm-hmm. and there are kind of two uh, sub-stories, but they're all based around your family, so you just turn up, and the main story is about your sister, mm-hmm. and then there's also a kind of a story about your, your dad's publishing kind of writing business, and your mum, mm-hmm. uh, what's going on at her work, but the main story is about your sister, and um, you know how she's doing at school, and, and what what happens. So how does it, does it how does the game it's gate clever. you in like... <laughs> You know, in, in discovering things in the right order. Yeah, order. it does. It okay. gates you. It basically gates you around the house in quite a, in a not super clever, but there are like locked doors. But it, it does lead you around in a fairly. Basically, you do the the uh, the left hand or wing first, mm. and then you you do up stairs, and then you do the basement, and then you do the right wing, and then you do the attic. Okay, that's so, basically how. It okay, works. so yeah, it does force you in an order, so you're not like, just piecing together the story, or you no. couldn't exactly go to the payoff immediately. No, you couldn't, and it's not too confusing. I didn't get lost and have to traipse around too much. I mean, there's well, loads of detail in there. It's just a house, yeah, uh, and and there are like secret passages and stuff, but they they become you know like hidden compartments and things. But they become. I was like, what kind of fucking house is this? It's <laughs> a crazy, like spooky yeah. house. That's mm. the idea. Is that it's like the weird. Psycho house, and she's like oh. the girl that lives in the weird psycho house. But I think it's just an old house. Like it seems like because it's like um, it's raining outside and like a thunderstorm and stuff. It's like, is this going to be a spooky, spooky ghost? Ooh, spooky Ooh, ghost! The jump scare. Yeah. But uh, but uh, you'll find out. No, there's no jump scares. There's no jump scares. But there you go. Jump scares. There was one bit where a light bulb, um, uh, you know, went. Ding. That was like ding, and it was like, what was that? Yes. <laughs> But, yeah, what was that noise? What? It did go ting. Yeah, but no, like they, they, I, they it, tend to go ting when you turn the light yeah, on. It's like when That's you what the didn't happen. Yeah, but it doesn't naturally explode that often. No, I mean they do. But I haven't. It's seen much that. more likely for it to happen when you're switching yeah, it on. It's yeah, a lot, lot, lot more likely. Yeah, I only remember that happening when I was a kid. One went in my bedroom that just went ting. It just went when it was on. 
Yeah. That's the only time I can remember. Yeah, every yeah. other time you're right. It's like you click the switch and you're like, oh, it goes, bugger. Oh, it's gone. Yeah. It used to happen quite a lot in, with the light, old lights in my room because we had one of those stupid halogen things where it has four bulbs attached to a rail or whatever. Yeah. And they just sucked. Yeah, they, they, they <laughs> And suck. also the power in our, in my house is not incredibly stable at the best of times, so right. presumably you they could just could blow out the, all the time. Presumably you could just use LED bulbs in those now. Yeah. Probably, yeah. That those halogen bulbs were those, but they fucking make a really loud noise compared to, the, yeah. <laughs> compared to the regular... So I've never noticed when the ones, because I have halogen bulbs, or did bar, have halogen right? bulbs, in, no, no, in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, in my place. And I've never, no- they, they've died, uh, but I've never been there when they died. <laughs> right. They yeah. make a really loud popping noise. It's not like a ting. It's like, pow! <laughs> yeah. So, yes. Check that out. It's really sweet, like I said. In <laughs> well, both, in both senses, well yes. written. Yeah, and not quite well acted. There's, there's like audio diaries, sort of, mm. that you kind of come across. The pieces. So, what instead of coming across like tapes? Well, you do come across tapes, mm. but they're they're always like tapes of music that are important. And you put oh, them in okay. cassette players. They're oh, actual see. physical audio tapes because it's right. set in nineteen ninety five. So there's like VCR tapes mm. and actual cassette tapes. Um, so there's no actual real uh, spoken dialogue. There is, but okay. there, it's what happens is you find an object like a letter and you read it, and then it, it kind of prompts. Oh, I see. Okay. It, uh, a bit of diary. And what actually happens is, yeah, you, you you eventually find the real diary where those entries are actually coming from. Hmm. By the end of the game, you found the the, the thing where those di- those the things you've heard have been actually right, coming from, which makes sense because you're kind of piecing together the story, hmm. but you get kind of preview of what was happening. Hmm. It's it's quite cleverly told, and uh, yeah, the acting's pretty good if for that for that character. Yeah, that that's cool. But it, it, well, it seems like you know, ha- having come off the back of sort of enjoying games like Dear Esther, I suppose. Yeah, it's it? it's along and those the, lines. And the storyless Proteus, sort of like in that yeah. same area. It's like I don't know. I think I I could probably enjoy it, but I still struggle or have a hard time, as you said, sort of alluded to earlier, in the money value against. Oh yeah, like it's that. a very simple story, but but I mean, it's the same as buying a. DVD or something. I mean, I mean, what is it though now? It's like we sort of it was that weird eleven pound range, wasn't it? Um, right, that seems a bit much. But I mean, I, I can't knows. remember. Or is it eight or sort of seven, eight? But it's like I, don't I can't know. remember. I don't know where I'd be now. Don't buy it since in the sale. I don't know. Yeah, it's sort of almost perhaps another one of those games that perhaps is carrying the this is art price tag. <laughs> or... I think it has. In I think it has less. Like, I don't know. As I. I think it has less content than um, the Stanley Parable, probably. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, even even Stanley Parable falls into that category. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good shout. Yeah, that one's more kind of meta art, whereas this yeah. is more straightforward, like traditional storytelling mm. art in a new context. But it's not trying to sure, sure. It's not trying to talk about it, its own medium in mm. any way. It's just trying to tell a story. Yeah. That's quite a good, quite a nice little sweet little story. Intriguing. Cool. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Really? Pretty much. I played Nintendo Land. I played Mario 3D World, which I already talked about. That's pretty Should good. you want to play? Uh, but I will gate myself to to <laughs> Yeah, yeah I'll, like I'll I say. run up to it. Nintendo Land was pretty cool. Um, I'm thinking of getting, now I've seen the quick look for, and now the graphics look a bit better, I'm thinking of getting uh, Dark Souls 2 on PC when it comes out. Oh, really? Don't know if, You're thinking of it? Yeah. Because Zach wasn't enamoured with it. Really? Well, well with Dark Souls one, you can play enough of Dark Souls one to really. I mean, it's not much decision. different, I don't think. But I mean, uh, I saw Ho playing it, and then mm. I've seen the giant mob guys go kind of crazy over it. Yeah, they them. love it, and uh, it looks pretty nice on PC. Not not amazing, but no, I mean, it's, but it's a good port. It's a decent port visually, this time, yeah. which is different. So I'm kind of tempted by that. I mean, that was the other thing I did briefly. I don't know if it's worth talking about, but I did go play some more DMC, and I still fucking love that game. Yeah, your fave. <laughs> Was that game of the year? No, we didn't. No. We didn't give it that in the end. We gave it to Rogue Legacy in the end. Yeah. Oh yeah, fair enough. Cool. Thanks for joining us for the sidecast, and now we've overrun. Yeah, Easter bumper well, special. In fairness, that's not as much of an overrun as we have done. Thanks to this aud- the audacity business. Well, we don't have to have awkward cuts. Yeah, so well, we have. True. We just have awkward goodbyes. Awkward goodbyes <laughs> that last forever. So uh, <laughs> it's just sometimes funny. I think it's time the Mackie D time potentially. Let's get burged. Yeah, it's time to get... <laughs> doesn't sound as good as getting beat. No, it doesn't. Get burged. Get burged. Sounds yeah. like I've got some sort of 
Sounds like a punishment. A giant mountain coming up towards you. <laughs> yeah. I think we've made that Alberg, joke before. Alberg is a city as well, isn't it? In the in the kind of a Scottish sense. Or... I'm getting developed? Like town planning? I'm getting burned. You're getting burned. Like yeah. Edinburgh. Barra. Yeah. Burg. Burg. <laughs> I'm becoming reorganised. <laughs> like a bad game of SimCity. I know what we didn't talk about in news. I'm being made into a residential district. <laughs> Spiritual successor to Alvin Centauri. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I'm... Uh, oh, yeah, Zach is not abused. I'm entirely like, fucking... unimpressed by that. Yeah. Oh, just like, it's just going to be a fucking... re It's a, skin, it's a DLC yeah. for Sim 5. Yeah. Not even going to be a proper new game. Uh, yeah. I was Unless they do actually, you know, they could. They the could. Tra- I was thinking about it because it's like, I don't think they could go back. They've done the same thing that SimCity's done, where they like they simplified it, which did, in, Sim- in Sim's case, made it better in some ways. In some ways. But they can't go back. They can't re-complicate it, which is what you'd have to do for Absent Jerry, because you can't exactly have like the unit editing thing and the like no. dynamically changeable landscape and stuff. All the cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, all the cool things about Absent Jerry. <laughs> we shall see. Yeah, let's, well, they, I, I think they're going to have to somehow come up with some new mechanics of some kind, but I can't think what they would be, which yeah, is... Come up with something, but it wasn't you know, as good as... They want a bit of a role, though, of late, aren't they, for Axis, so... Well... I mean, I like yeah. Sim 5 a lot. And... <laughs> yeah, but that was ages ago. Yeah, but XCOM was great. Big fan so... of XCOM, yeah. yeah. That was freaking sweet. So, yeah. I was, I was sort of more interested in the fact that Alpha Centauri didn't come up in the discussion more often. Like, everyone's just saying, oh, it's Sim's going to space, and it's like, well, they sort of did that. On Reddit, they're talking about Alpha Centauri. Yeah, yeah. Right? but, you know, in sort of, like, the news posts. That's about true. This, well, it's because it's all the new people who liked Sim 5 and didn't like any of the Sims 4 don't know about the history of Sim. Oh, I suppose they're being newsy. And it's like, let's not talk about old things. I guess. Because it's not new. Cool. Okay, for the ne- now end. Now end. Bye, guys. Oh, no, I need to go hit the stop button. Catch yeah. you next time. Mexican Rob, say goodbye. Goodbye! I'm going to get a bite from Zach. No, I'm too hungry. Okay. Bye. Bye.